Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Break the Rules stream. I am your host, Lev Polyakov at LevPo on Twitter, and we are all the way live today with one wonderful old comer, Nina Paley, and two newcomers, Ian Miles Chong, Clifton Duncan, all the way live. Thank you guys so much for coming in here. We are going to be talking about Nina's comic, The Agents of Hag. <laughs> Highly recommend to check it out. Uh-oh, there's some cat trouble happening there on Nina's side. No, anyway. my, other, my other computer started running the podcast so i have oh, to turn boy. it off so it doesn't you know, oh yeah that that happens to me uh, a lot well it used to happen to me a lot too it was a tragedy but anyway <laughs> we are here to talk about nina's uh cancellation indiegogo crowdfunding website canceled nina's wonderful comic agents of hag because of certain gender <laughs> issues and we, we don't here... know that we don't know why we they don't did know it. that we okay. can assume well, that. We can assume. All right, it, let's get into it. So, Lev, it could be because I'm Jewish and they're anti-Semitic. Mm. <laughs> could be. That's Kanye Kanye runs Indiegogo. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, like, what's really weird is that Indiegogo has historically been friendly to conservatives, right? I mean, that's a reason why all these uh, comics gate people have no problem using Indiegogo, whereas Kickstarter has some sort of really woke. Uh, mandate over there that you know when if they try to run on kickstarter they get canceled almost immediately but on indiegogo to get away with it well i shouldn't say get away with it more like they're allowed to be there right and, they, and it should be but mm. now with your cancellation it, it it's it's weird it's like do they have new people there or is like is the trans lobby really that powerful that they're getting you know even a site like indiegogo to pull your content that's messed up well, let's uh, step back for a moment. I just want to do a uh, introduction. I mean, Ian Miles Chong, I think everybody here knows who you are. Uh, but for those who do not, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you start and all that good stuff? I used to be on the left. Okay, not the most interesting thing. I think a lot of people can relate to being on the left previously. And it's more like everything shifted towards the far left, right? The Overton window moved farther to the left. And, and the rest of us, we just stayed in one spot. And now we're on the right. I think I think that describes most people although i was you know typically on the right already more like a moderate right wing and now they'll say i'm far right which is insane which i'm not you know and uh but beyond that i'm a journalist and i work for rebel news um i do like commentary i mean i'm, I'm on youtube you can find my channel it's catch up um yeah it's catch up it's catch up catch up <laughs> you can look that up it's linked on my twitter profile um uh I've, I've been all over the place and you know, I've written for a whole bunch of different uh, publications, websites. I used to be on Daily Caller, uh, was part of Human Events, now I'm part of Rebel News. Yeah, I mean, uh, ask me anything you want and, and you'll probably have an answer. Sweet. And uh, Clifton Duncan, tell us your story. Oh, well, how much time do you have? No, um, no I was a, uh, was a uh, professional classically trained actor. Um, and, uh, you know, off Broadway, on Broadway television. And um, I decided that uh, I didn't want a certain uh, mandated medical product. So now I uh, uh, settle for being a mediocre Twitter personality and uh, making YouTube videos and uh, mainly my podcast, uh, Clif the Cl Clifton Duncan podcast. I've made it very easy to remember. Um, that's my that's my log, my five, my two minute elevator pitch, even though I have no concept of time, obviously. But uh, that's me, basically. Your Excellent. voice is amazing. You've got a yes. great voice. I'm just kind of like, eh, eh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should just all shut up and just let Clifton Duncan just talk for the entire time. Yeah. Well, if if, if, not, if yeah. nothing else, well, I, I'll do it, Ian. Uh, if nothing else, awesome. um, you know, just just pay me. If nothing else, uh, you know, once yeah, I, of once once the looks fade, uh, then I'll still have this. So there's that. Mm, indeed. So uh, Nina Paley, whose looks have not faded by an inch. <laughs> You are still as beautiful as I remember you. Back when we met at the uh, 2004 Asifa uh, East, uh, whatever that was back in the day with Pat Smith and David Levy and all those cats. Anyway, you were kind of canceled from the animation community for your gender critical views originally. And for no, those not originally. So no? I left. I left New York before I could be canceled from any anime. Well, yeah, I have been. Okay, if you mean like animation, so you mean animation festivals? Yes, I have been deplatformed, uh, lied about uh excommunicated yes but i also and, left new york city so i left the scene mm. before they could excommunicate me and when did it all start what was the thing that really uh got people's goats the very first thing that you did in 2017 i criticized on facebook the comparison of sex segregated bathrooms 
to sex to race segregated drinking fountains. There was a popular meme that said that uh, these were the say that that women who want sex segregated bathrooms are the same as white people who want no wow. blacks allowed drinking fountains, like whites what? only drinking fountains. Wow. <laughs> so I insane. that is nuts. I so believe it was, you. It was it's actually. Nuts. George Takai that was circulating that. And I noticed some friends oh, of, of mine were recirculating it. And I was like, okay, I just can't anymore. And <laughs> I called yeah. it out. And I believe I got banned from Facebook for the first time because I learned about little groups of trans activists that target women mm -hmm. and mass report their posts as spam. So yep. my normal posts got reported as spam and I got booted off of Facebook a couple times. And then a year later, I shared a song by the late, great Connie Bryson that went, if a person has a penis, he's a man to the, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> yeah. And that caused utter outrage, like loss of, lifelong friendships outrageous how dare you point out biological of, facts oh yeah and i actually shared that i actually came out as gender critical because there had just been a women's march it's weird in... that that's a term right gender critical i mean that's the normal state of being before 15 years ago everybody was quote unquote gender critical there was no, no not a single transgender activist no actually Gender critical comes from a specific thing. It's it's come to mean other things, but what gender critical is actually comes from gender critical radical feminism. Right. Okay, where yeah. radical feminists didn't fall for this stuff because it was regressive and reinforced stereotypes. So it yep. was only the radical feminists that were like, hey, we've been fighting these stereotypes. We don't like them. Other people, uh, have, there are all kinds of reasons to criticize genderism the genderist ideology yeah but uh a lot of those can be regressive as well right like um right well they, they, they see gender roles as in women need to be put in dresses and right. not go to work right they, they believe that like or right. to the extreme example be like the taliban right i suppose yeah we don't really think of the <laughs> taliban as gender critical and no, I, yeah I yeah have you seen I, that i, I, Matt I, I Walsh's... would consider myself gender critical too because like i believe women should be able to go to work i believe that women should have the same opportunities as as men and i mean if many women want to be housewives that's great too i mean look at sweden right they have probably the freest most liberal uh gender-based laws in the world and yet most women there choose a more traditional lifestyle that's their choice right and uh in, in places where there's less freedom you see you know uh women taking traditionally masculine roles to uh, express themselves. And that's a great thing, I think. I mean, eventually they find what they want to do. And if they're happy, they're happy. If they're not, you know, whatever. But this idea that, that, that you know, men and women have to be put in separate, completely separate boxes. And, and, and you know, if, if a boy likes playing with, uh, with Barbie dolls instead of fire trucks, he must be a girl. That is, I mean, that's so regressive. That's like Taliban levels of regression, if you ask me. I also think there's this interesting, this idea of having to come out in the sense of, of having a certain belief system. You know, it, it's it was one thing where, you know, if, if you're in the closet as far as your sexual orientation or preferences um, and you are wanting to stave off any sort of um, uh, uh, bigotry or negativity that 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 would result as, as a you know, that would that would come as a result of that. <clears throat> That's one thing. But to simply say. Yes, I'm someone who believes in sexual dimorphism, and I'm coming out of the closet <laughs> to, to, to declare yep. this. It's, yep. I think it's, I think it's really, um, it really paints a a very vivid picture of where we are as a culture and society right now. I mean, surely there is a way that we can also that we can recognize the the autonomy and the rights of sexual minorities, and also. Uh, preserve this idea that there are distinctions between men and women and that if people want to cross over you know that, that not everyone fits into those you know traditional boxes and that it's kind of cool that we live in an era now where people can um can 
what's the term can sort of cross over and or or pick and choose as they as they as they please i mean i think that's kind of cool that that, that to me feels more progressive than saying um you know women don't <laughs> women aren't really a thing anymore i, well, I what, don't what do yeah. you mean by cross well i guess we can we can get to that later i guess you know i can ask i can challenge you and then you'll answer in your nice mm. voice well, 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 well if, I say, if I say crossover, it, it's it's a, it's piggybacking off of uh, what Ian just said in terms of like traditional roles, so to speak, or this idea of what is a what are traditional masculine and feminine um, um, uh, roles, and the the idea that that can be more malleable. People don't have to be uh, people don't have to be um, locked inside of these boxes now. Um, you know, I, I think, I mean, I'm someone I, I, I cling to the label of liberal in, in the sense that, um, you know, be who you be who you want to be and what, and what feels best to you as long as you're not harming anybody. Um, you know, you, I'm, I'm somebody who, you know, I'm, I'm a I joke all the time. I'm a pot smoking pro choice atheist who loves Judy Garland and battle rap. You know, it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to put me into any kind of box. And so I, I, I appreciate others who don't fit into those boxes either. And um, and I honor that. And it's it's difficult to be sort of one of a kind uh, amongst uh, the, the majority. But, you know, it, it, there, there's it's I think there's a difference between um, between blurring those lines and also denying, you know, denying the existence of um, a, 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 an entire sex of people. So maybe that answers your question, Nina. Yeah, I mean, my, my response to that. So back in the day, uh, you know, trannies were like the most resilient people I knew. And I had lots of tranny friends. I mean, I still do to compared to average. I had Are, you allowed, are you allowed trannies. to say tranny? I yeah, I think you are. I sure as hell am. Uh, because that's be. the thing is that these were resilient people with a sense of humor. And, and, and they call and themselves they were, like transsexuals. They don't call themselves transgender, right? And they're they call themselves trannies. Like everyone that's going to yeah, be my they friend nor they're normal. has I mean, a normal sense of humor, but they were oh. just particularly resilient because they knew they were weirdos and they were like, yeah, I'm doing this anyway. And I don't, you know, I'm going to do this regardless of mm -hmm. what other people yeah. think of me. And that's why they were my friends, right? This was 30 years ago. Oh, so, Nina, Nina, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to jump go, in, but just go, a quick go. question for you, you know, because I, my recollection is that back in the day, I mean, I'm an 80s baby, early 80s baby. I'm, a, I'm you know, older young, than you. Well, well, so, so, so old, old millennial, young Gen X, and in, in my yeah. case. And for me, you know, it was like, oh, you know, you had a sex change. That's interesting. So anyway, uh, so this other thing was going on and people just, <laughs> right. kind of, you yeah. know, they, yeah. they, they weren't, they didn't, they exactly. didn't fixate on it and, it, and they didn't, uh, in my recollection, and again, this is not my experience, so I don't know. You, you would be you would be better able to better position. Well, I lived, to I lived in the Castro of San Francisco in the ah, early nineties. And there, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> and so there was just people yeah. let their freak flags fly. Yeah, it was a great place oh, yeah, for me. Yeah. I I loved it. It was so different back then. You were wearing uh, a dominatrix outfit, right? Sometimes, yeah, but only because men were. Yeah. Well, you were on Jerry Springer in the outfit. Yes, I wore. If you want to see me in 1997 oh, wearing a dominatrix outfit, a wig, and a lot of makeup, you can watch that Jerry Springer episode. But anyway, it was fun, right? Every like there was tons of gender bending and and drag. And it was all a subversion of these stereotypes. Nobody claimed to literally change sex. So yeah. as long as you're not claiming to actually literally change sex, I'm down with all of it, or at least I was. It's, I've really changed it's like, since. It's like performance art, right? And in yeah. a lot of ways, it's performance yeah. art. It's a subversion. It's I mean, it's art in general. And. Not that anymore, was, though. Not, not anymore. Now it's like reality. Now it's like we live in like a postmodern world where art and sorry, like simulation and simulacra are reality, right? It's like it's it's nuts. It's like there, there's this active denial of reality that's going on where everyone has their truth, and you know if you disagree with them, then you simply have a different perspective. And it's like, hold on a second. One plus one is always two. It can never be three or two point five or five, right? And and but they're insisting that no, it's it's whatever you want it to be. That's where but, critical math comes in. Which is but, he, but Ian, let's let's be fair. You are, and so is Clifton, a, a person of color, so to speak. If we really like uh, go for the definitions today, imagine yourself being a white kid, like a white cis male, and everybody points at you saying that you are the devil. The one thing that you may have to change things would to become be become trans. To... Yep. 
Now I'm not yep. saying that that's the case for everybody, but they do. But that's they even admit that's it. a pressure. Yep. Do. Yeah. Well, there, also, I want to I want to make sure that everyone knows that I'm a masculine presenting transgendered <laughs> lesbian. <laughs> Me, so like, too, I th me too, Clifton. <laughs> my gender is super straight. It's super straight. It's not just straight. It's super straight. Yeah. You know? Whatever happened, yeah. by the way, to that super hashtag super straight thing? That was know. unfortunate for a while. I guess it while. got canceled or something. You know, yeah. everybody who adopted it got fired from their jobs, probably. But but anyway, look. Like I think we're all I think we're all on the same side over here. But yeah. and I think a lot of the people who are listening the rational to like, side, yeah, like, you know, I think and they're also liberal. People, these are these the are old people. school liberal values, right? Yes, like go ahead, let your freak flag fly. My thing is like this one bother other people. Yeah, yeah, but go ahead, identify however you want. But what you can't do is force me to identify you the way you want me to identify you. Yep. It's like, you're free to identify her. And now that makes you a conservative. But you're reason. a freaking man, so yeah. I'm not like, gonna lie. Like when Elon Musk says it, right? I mean, when Elon Musk says what you're saying right now, people are like, oh, Elon, you're a conservative. It's like, no, he's 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 a moderate, he's a liberal. I mean, so are most people. And, and yet somehow anyone who's not insane is is cast as a conservative, which is fine. I'm happy with that. Well, I, I am. It. I'm conservative <laughs> of liberal values from there you go. 30 years ago. Yeah. You know what? And this, and this to me hits on why I don't really uh, adhere to these kinds of labels, even though I, I just said like two minutes ago, I, I yeah. very strictly adhere to the liberal label. It's, you yeah. know, I mean, I joke that, you know, these days to be progressive, to be actually progressive is to be anti-progressive. And, you know, I'm conservative about some things in terms of like preserving the the concept of sexual dimorphism, but but I'm also, you know, progressive in other ways in terms of like, you know, gay marriage and and being, uh, you know, and, and like I said before, exploring um, where, wherever you are on the on the quote unquote gender spectrum. And um, it, but it's just it's just bizarre to me because, you know, I have all these people screaming at me online about how, you know, I'll say something to be like, they'll be like, what about your boy Trump? And I'm like, that doesn't really apply to me, bro. Like, sorry. <laughs> you yeah. know, it just it just doesn't people for people who are so obsessed with um, with the um, with non binariness they, they are certainly very, very rigidly binary thinkers in a lot of ways. It's very bizarre. It's, it's very bizarre to me. And I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who who feels like, uh, you know, you know, do do what you want to do and, and, and live how you want to live if, if you're not hurting anybody. But uh, apparently not. I, I, I feel anymore. like there's, there's going to be a point. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a point where that, that you know, even that becomes a far right uh, fascist position. It, it is. It is a far right <laughs> fascist position. I mean, that's all what most people want. And, and they're being. Uh, you know, canceled, uh, kicked out of their jobs for saying that, for simply saying that we need to have diversity of opinions, diversity of thought, the mm -hmm. ability to question what is told to us, that we can't just embrace and accept everything the establishment wants us to, right? I mean, if, if the narrative is that, you know, up is down and down is up and we say no, then we're canceled for it. It's, it's absurd. Well well, I want to get a lay of the land on when it comes to these money-raising cartels like Indiegogo. But before that, Philip Daniel in the chat here, a good friend of the show, he has the comment, which is actually a line that uh, Curvis Yarvin, Menchus Moldbug, who was on the stream, by the way, last week, said... Oh, you got him. Nice. Yeah, two times already. So uh, nice. looking forward nice. to the third. So Philip yeah. Daniel says, we are all conservative about that which we know about best. Agree or disagree? I think that's true. Yeah. I don't know if it's about what we know about best. Maybe it's what, what maybe it's about what, what we what we value best or value the most. This is a yeah. complete side note, but Nina, did you happen to appear on the Jerry Springer episode about a uh, suicide cults? Is that yeah. is that the one? Yep. Okay, yep. I'm I'm watching it right now. So if I don't if I don't <laughs> Don't do that. Pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I don't pay attention to you, if but I don't no, you can pay attention to the screen uh, to no. to the audio, but look at Nina in the pay dominatrix attention. outfit while My you're watching. I was like, yeah. Yo, I was like Nina, I would, I would look. No offense, I would totally smash. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm looking at <laughs> in 19, 1997. I'm watching it right now. Like, damn, Nina. Mm. Wow. Hold on. on. Let me uh, let me join Clifton. You know, like I'm just I'm just the host. <laughs> All right. Great. I'll be a masturbatory yeah. aide. Oh, I'm, I'm using gonna you, Nina. You are you are an, you are an object to me. I don't care about your intellect or any of your opinions right. or your well, personality. I'm afraid my intellect is what what's here now and it's what got me into this predicament. So let me talk more about being canceled yes. for saying women don't have penises. Right. So after oh, I said on Facebook, common sense, that if a 
person has a penis, he's a man. That just, I got disinvited from film festivals that had invited me to judge, to show, to speak. I was a festival darling prior to this. I had a brand new film coming out. What would you it, do? It was at a few festivals, but mostly it did best as far away from the Anglosphere as possible. So the only award it got was like in Russia. Of course, and, Russia's based. You know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, it showed in, like... like, a Polish festival failed to cancel it, but it's never been shown in the UK. And, you know, Belgian festival canceled it. All these festivals were just canceling it right and left. Um, and uh, it was really heartbreaking because I worked hard on that second film, which is called Seder Masochism. And, uh, you know, no more speaking gigs. Uh, people stopped teaching me because I was taught in various animation curricula. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I got turfened and can oh, I got canceled locally. Uh, a cafe asked me to screen the film and then the, this mob formed here and canceled that screening. And then two, where are you? I'm in Ur Urbana, Illinois, where the University of Illinois is. You'd think it'd be a more, you know. Like... Oh, it's the worst. It's like oh. a factory for this stuff. It just, it just churns out, uh, clone, you know. Yeah, woke clones. clones yeah, uh, NPCs. I mean, I remember once upon a time when you know college cities were probably the most tolerant places, right? You'd have. Uh, diversity of opinions, different religions. They were the ones coming out in force, defending Muslims, defending the Jews, you know, like in the 1930s and 40s. But now it's like if you go against, you know, the prescribed narrative, then then you're canceled, right? They don't even want to hear opposing ideas. You cannot even have a, an opposing viewpoint. You can't even challenge them. You can't even ask questions. You can't even tell a joke. Mm. In your case, you told a joke. Although and, 30s, it's interesting that you mentioned 30s, because around the 1930s, like late 30s, early 40s, there was a whole movement, not just in colleges, but intellectuals throughout the United States that were pro, not just communist, but pro Stalinist. There's a great book I recommend yeah. everybody check out by Eugene Lyons, The Red Decade. And it talks about that. And so when I read something like that, the mass hysteria that's going on right now, if we're talking about people in positions of uh, you know the establishment, it does not seem as crazy as it would without that understanding that this has been happening for a long time. People just get into, you know, like Moldball calls it the cathedral. People just get into this frame of mind where they don't want to be the odd man or woman or non-binary out. They want to be exactly mm -hmm. like their friends are, so they don't get uh, so they don't get cast out like Nina. Yesterday, all have purple hair. Oh, I was just in a, um, a Twitter space yesterday, and uh, the, there's a quote by Eugene Ionesco, the playwright that came up, which was basically about how people need to understand, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bastardize the, the, uh, the, the quote, but uh, it was about the rise of totalitarian regimes, essentially, and it was about how people generally, most people, are not comfortable with being uncommon. And that's why people don't speak out against, um, you know, they want to fit in and it's completely understandable. You know, they want to be validated. They want to be led. They want to be uh, part of the, the, the group. They don't want to be outcast. And uh, when you have a, a, a culture and a society where, and I try to explain this to people, and uh, it's hard to do so without sounding like some kind of, uh, you know, conspiracy theorist, so to speak. But uh, when you have, I mean, think about how many people become university professors, how many people become, you know, famous athletes and, 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 and uh, celebrities. How many people become uh, become writers, uh, journalists, so so on and so forth? So you have this you have this small contingent of people who have this one worldview, but they have a very disproportionate uh, uh, influence and reach in terms of how they can communicate their message. And I think what it, what happens, people feel as though this is a very pervasive uh, point of view and and uh, and and way of thinking, and uh, they don't want to be on the in, in the out group in any way, especially, you know, in, in the face of whenever you whenever you voice any sort of um, <clears throat> logical opinion. I mean, I, I joke that, you know, we now have creationists and, uh, and intelligent design people who have a, a greater grasp of sexual dimorphism than people mm -hmm. who are secular and claim to uh, believe in evolution. <clears throat> um, but people don't want to speak up because they just they don't want to they don't want to face the wrath of being called, you know, transphobic or sexist or, or whatever. So it's, it's very, it's understandable, but it's also very frustrating. But uh, I mean, that, I think that's kind of it. That, that, 
that's part of what we're dealing with. There's also no adults in the room. So the campaign against me locally was started by the interim chair of the Gender and Women's Studies Department at the U of I. So I guess she was trying to gain clout by suppressing a feminist filmmaker that lived in town, being from the Gender and Women's Studies Department. Uh, and the fact that the first cafe caved, it was a terrible idea because you give these, you enable them and they just get much more excited yeah. and, and powerful. You're just like fueling Russia. them. Yes. And these people are supposed to be adults, right? Like, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, you know, even, even 15 years ago, Sita sings the blues, right? It was mm. controversial among a certain segment, right? It offended Hindu sensibilities of, you know, uh, Hindu Tvadis, and occasionally they would want to shut it down or protest it. And the people and, that and ran burnt venues, effigies, burnt effigies of you or right. There was no, I don't think they no? burned an effigy of me. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think there was some effigy burning. I got to look at the archives, but anyway. Yeah, look at, look at the archives. But nobody listened to them, right? That's the point. No the, one... the, the whole thing, yeah, it's like when this stuff happens, the people that run the institutions, and you know, a lot of this stuff, the people, we were worried about like religious fundamentalists. Yeah. And the people that ran these institutions were like very proud of not succumbing to that kind of pressure. And they would always go on about, you know, the importance of presenting controversial works. And they actually kind of liked it if a work was controversial and stimulated mm -hmm. discussion. I just cannot believe how they just, everybody's rolling over, you know, these festival directors, these university people, museum directors, directors of all sorts of things. They're the just one like, that Brett Weinstein went to, right? The university. Oh yeah, Evergreen, yeah. Evergreen, yeah, that was like, that was like the big one. I mean, that was when I think most of America or even the world really started waking up to the reality of, of these colleges, right? It was Evergreen and then it was Jordan Peterson getting canceled by the University of Toronto. Right. And, and now it's like it's literally every college, every university, um, you know, except for like maybe a handful of them. But even the big ones like Harvard and Yale are, yeah. are completely inundated in this stuff. I mean, it was that Halloween stuff where they were canceling two professors, uh, tenured professors for uh, sending out an email saying, don't get you know disgruntled by the fact that some people might wear offensive costumes for Halloween. It's right. not appropriation, right? It's so, not a big deal. So and the it, issue it, is, like like Clifton says, people want to belong and they're terrified of stepping out of line. But part of social organization is to have adults, right? You have adults in the room yep. that, because you're always going to have psychos, right? You're going to have a couple psychos and you're going to have a lot of followers who want safety. You need these people. These people are in these positions that are created for them to be responsible, and they have completely eschewed responsibility. And it's that's well, why I we think, have this. I think part of the issue, though, if if you're talking about adults, the implication is that there's going to be a hierarchy, and that somebody has to be in charge, and other people have to be, I guess, sort of supplicants. And we all know, everyone here knows that um, the idea of hierarchies or someone being in power or in leadership role is simply a a a cis, uh, a cisgendered, you know, white <laughs> patriarchal. They used to term that as curiarchy. Oh, curiarchy. That's right. I, th yeah. I, th I thought that was like only, you know, 20, like, I thought that's like 2016, uh, no, 16 no, it's, terminology. It's, it's, it's a new one because it's like, you know, it carries everything, right? It, it's the cisness, yeah. it's the transness, it's the, the race, sex, everything, you know, <laughs> curiarchy, no. You, what do you call it? Queer, queriarchy? No, curiarchy. No, no, I think it's curiarchy. K, K, K I E R. K Y E K Y yeah K Y R I A C H Y yeah. That's funny because what we actually have is a queerarchy, which is the queer right. theorists uh, are running yeah. everything. And they all look the same. They they all look the same. They got a <laughs> smug look, you know. They but they uh, look so smug. The problem oh, glasses. They, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, they the definitely do. The, the the Roy G. Biv hair. Yeah. Alexander Bard, <laughs> the uh, philosopher Alexander Bard, a yep. regular guest on the show, he pointed out that a lot of the gay parades today, they're not even run by gay people anymore. They're mm, run yep. by liberal white women. They are yeah. the ones who are in charge and of identify as queer. They're the they worst. Use... Well, yep. I mean, no, I mean, Nina, I mean, yeah, but anyway, look, they like have they, them pronouns, they issue... but they're actually just straight women. So like the whole thing with this, um, with, well, allies, you should ask Corinna Cohn about allies sometimes. Mm -hmm. Allies. Corinna's great. Everything. Shout out to Corinna. Yes. Yeah, shout out to Corinna. Allies. Uh, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Nina. Uh, so on both sides of the genderism issue are women. It's like this 
battle primarily fought by women. It benefits men. It's it's for the sake of men because, you know, the world's most vulnerable women are men, according to the theory. Uh, but it's women who, who are saying no and pushing back. And it's lots of other women who are very much fulfilling the role of women, which is to be kind and to make damn sure the other women are being kind too, or else you will ruin them. Uh, so yeah, it's just, it, I, it's, I, I, it's amazing I'll, how much women are driving this. I'm getting kind of mm -hmm. like a courtly Cersei Lannister vibe from some of this energy that you're describing here. Like a lot of, I think a lot of the guys, even like top CEOs, they may be too scared, but I think a lot of the women there, they do kind of control a lot of things behind the scenes. Like people talk about the conspiracy, like, you know, the uh, smoke filled room with the cigars. I bet a lot of it is kind of like Nina, you're talking about a lot of women who uh, want to make sure that everybody is on the up and up and they're behaving themselves according to the uh, algorithm. And that is a very concerning thing. Like, how exactly do you, how exactly do you challenge that? Well, you also gain stat. Like everybody, male and female, is constantly vying for status. I'm sure Clifton understands that. If you're an actor, you've probably had improv. Maybe not. I don't know. Like when I, when I, yeah, no status, yeah. yeah, it's just a constant stra status transactions. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, women gain status by showing, really, by showing how submissive they are and and how far they will go to appease men can like I, you, I mean, you get rewarded for that well i would also add to that and um, and jordan peterson brought this up i think it was a good point is that i think in terms of how men and women as women especially um uh, work themselves into more and more sectors of society when conflict arises you know between two guys you know th there's there's this understanding of like you know we can we can be very um there can be a very tense discussion or an argument, um, and there's that underlying um, that underlying possibility that that ability that it could escalate to blows. But when you're a man dealing with a with a woman who you have a conflict with, there are certain tools that are off the table. I mean, even if you raise your voice, for instance, um, people will come at you and say, "Well, why are you being so abusive?" And you know, it's it's and it's really kind of sexist in a way and demeaning. It's like you know, this is a woman. Why are you you know why are you screaming at her? And so I, I wonder if part of that, in terms of CEOs or whatever, or or men who are in power, being able to deal with this um, with with conflict. I mean, me personally, I mean, I've enjoyed many collaborations uh, with 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 professional uh, women. I, I feel like um, you know people should be uh, professional and courteous and respectful all the time. And sometimes you're going to argue, and if it's about the work that we're doing, then that's one thing, and don't make it personal. But um, I think there is that that element uh, for a lot of men who have been deeply ingrained uh, to, or it's been deeply ingrained in men, like, you know, don't raise your voice, don't be aggressive, you know, and so how do you, I they think part of that is, is like, is how do you manage that, um, that conflict where you don't want to um, be painted as someone who was an abuser, but you also need, you, you have a point to, to need to get across. And I, I don't know if we have quite figured out how to navigate that. And I also think in terms of status, Nina, I think there are some women who who know that and take advantage of it and and hold that over over their male counterparts um, because they know that you know if if the man comes back and says well no you're wrong and the yada yada they can they can say well you're mansplaining and why do you hate you know why do you hate women so much you don't you don't respect my my mind or my or my intellect yada 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 so uh, you know i think there's um in terms of that i think there's there's something else at play there as well if that makes I was any think, sense i was thinking of women on women but sure i mean women are, I mean, obviously, I, I, not obviously, I like many aspects of radical feminist writing and the concepts of women's liberation, although there never will be actual women's liberation, but, you know, struggle, women's struggle. That said, personality disorders are at least as common in women as they are in men. So the big difference between men and women is that men are more physically violent they're, you know, they're physically stronger, but in terms of really fucked up bullshit, <laughs> women, you know, there's plenty of that. And cluster any, B. yeah, exactly. Cluster B, 
in men and women, you know, men tend more to yep. be narcissists. It just ex it expresses itself to... differently, right? Yes. It expresses itself very differently. Yes, well, but I don't, I don't think women are better than men by a long shot. And there's just every kind of devious, messed up tool yep. of, of fighters going to use. I think that as we get older, you know, and more experienced and more successful, I would argue that most successful men are perhaps of my age and older, right? Late 30s to beyond we tend to be able to suss out who the problem makers are, right? The troublemakers. We, and we know not to deal with them. We know that they're drama queens. We know that they're going to pull some cluster B bullshit and just not deal with them. And so the only people that we deal with, whether they're male or female, man or woman, uh, are going to be stable people, stable-minded people just like okay. ourselves who can complement ourselves. Hopefully, if you're not successful, then maybe, you know, maybe it's it's time to consider... Uh, talking to people who are of the same mind, right? I mean, like, right, and that's and that's why personality disorder trans activists are all over every single tech company. That's why all of the moderators are, of Reddit they love have to oh, personality. They inject like, themselves into that. Yeah, who are these successful men that are not associating with them because they all seem to be hiring them and then not able to get They're rid of them? Afraid of them. It's the it's the HR departments, right? What happens is a man, usually a man successful sometimes it's a woman very successful decides to start a company hires a hr department and the hr department basically staffs it with like buddies from her from her tumblr community or something that's what i've seen in the tech industry where it's always the hr manager who starts recruiting among her friends or the people online that she knows and they get all these weirdos in but apart from that they're not really capable of doing any sort of kind of work you know they're activists and if they don't have these jobs which by the way they sort of blackmail people into getting the jobs in the first place because if they don't have these jobs they're having suicidal ideation and and so they try to make people feel bad for them so they give them a job i've seen this firsthand in you know activist communities so i used to be a part of like this uh i wouldn't say a feminist activist community but more like a video game uh sort of progressive community and, you know, I would say most of us were liberals and on the same page of things. But then the trans activists came along and you just kind of had to give them things like emotionally. They were mm. extremely needy and they would try to prove themselves. You know, they're not exactly helpless and they were capable of doing things. They're not stupid. They're smart, but they're very emotionally dependent. And then eventually your, your whole community just becomes like this emotional support mechanism just for them alone. And this is something that the older trans, uh, transsexual people would be frustrated by. They'd be like, all these younger ones, all they're, all they're doing is demanding us that we give them things. And if we don't give them things enough, they try to cancel other people. They try to, you know, say that you're not being supportive enough, that you're just using them for their emotional labor. You know, they love using that term. And so th that's the reason why all these communities, eventually they fall apart. They're just not sustainable because it becomes, again... Uh, it's like you're dealing with parasites with leeches who are just well, except, except the when community. we're talking about big tech companies that can afford to do those kind of hiring they can afford to do stupid stuff yeah which is like twitter for the longest time was an emotional support mechanism for these clowns and until elon came around, uh, along and he was like hold on a second we're basically wasting millions of dollars every month paying these guys to do nothing they're just sitting in the office and doing absolutely fucking nothing let's fire 75 percent of them and twitter's better than ever wow imagine that yeah, I mean, There's space is still kind of suck in terms of glitchiness, but hopefully the, they're going to go over that hill. But uh, I do yep. want to, speaking of the uh, more corporate side of this whole thing, talk about exactly what is happening with Nina and Indiegogo. So give us the uh, brief. What exactly has transpired so far, Nina? And, okay. and also, the people who are watching this, make sure you smash that subscribe button, smash the like button, click the bell. Very important for the algorithm. Add a like. Very important for the you gotta algorithm. You got to wear a hoodie when you say that, you know? You can't just say stuff like that. You got to wear a hoodie. Smash that like button the way, or that subscribe button the way Clifton Duncan would <laughs> smash 1997 me in a dominatrix outfit. You know what's hilarious is I literally just click over to the tab uh, and, and there's a freeze and it's frozen on you. I'm like, damn, look at that. Look at all that hair. God damn. Mm. That's a wig, dude. That's a wig. That's a yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Clifton. That's a wig? Clifton, what is the uh, number on. so dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like embrace it. Get I so embrace far. it though. It's like when I was doing that, I was like, you know, you could put makeup and wig and a wig on a rock, and a man would get all excited about it. You know what though? But here, but here's yep. the thing that, that I noticed between men and women is that uh, as, as a man, I can say, yeah, I'm dumb as fuck. But for <laughs> but with women, you know, you can be like, 
like, you know, Chris Rock has this great line where he says, you know, men lie the most, but women tell the biggest lies, which goes back to what you were, what you were saying before. And if you if you point out any flaws in women, they're like it, it, there, there's this great hostility and like lack of humility. It's like and, and my thing is my term, my, my feeling about or my philosophy, about, uh, my philosophy about equality is that, you know, women are just as capable as capable to be of being scumbags as men are. And, um, yeah. you know, and, and, but at the same time, I'm just like, dude, I, I feel like men are more able to embrace um, how ridiculous we can be. Than, mm. than than women generally are. So so I'm I'm happy to, to be like in yeah. general that's true. You know I mean yeah Nina like you look hot you woman. look hot that, that hair looks hot but like yep. she's telling me it's a wig yep. I'm like you know what I don't care it's fine. I don't Wait care. Cl Clifton what is the uh, time frame so I can take it and put it on the screen that particular no, image? Really. This is a uh, it's 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 a oh, no. minute it's it's three <laughs> minutes and twenty three seconds that the title of the video is Jerry Springer I want to join a suicide cult. Wait three twenty three I'm not even in the dominatrix outfit yet i'm just okay, wearing well, a jumpsuit no you keep going no i, I don't know no? Well, I you look okay? you look like that no, lady no, no, from ghostbusters fair. what's her name yeah i mean i'm wearing like Sigourney fake Weaver. glasses yes she looks kind of like Sigourney no, Weaver no, 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 here, no 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 so no? this is so this is a i guess it's a they, they, they just took uh, clips or whatever so so whatever you're wearing um, right now there's no glasses clips. it's just all right and, and okay this, this is a freeze frame and it's uh you uh, you look very attractive, and I don't care if it's fake hair. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't, you know, I'm it's, not going to get into detail about uh, my, yeah. my grown man. Well, you know, what? a, man, a man, certain men can wear that stuff, and and they look equally as hot. They get that's away with one. Of, yeah. That's me, sort of what this is all about. Let, but they're not actually you, women. Uh, let me tell you about, about my about my uh, my audition for Kinky Boots. Uh, you know, at, at some other time, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk okay. about it. <laughs> all right. If I had a time machine, Clifton, it'd be great. I don't though. And I just put it on the screen, by the way. You guys can't see it, but uh, Ian, you the can take a look can. at that video. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I do see the audio gets a little bit loud. So, uh, it is on the screen right now. Nina in the sexy black outfit. You guys can't see it. Nina, you can't see it either. But the people on YouTube, the good people on YouTube who've all subscribed, the good people on YouTube can see it right now. All right. Well, now I'm menopausal woman. Now I look like this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, right. So I did this comic. I thought, like, what am I going to do this winter as a creative thing? Oh, I think I'll do a comic book, you know, for turfs, for and about turfs, turfy comic book and investigated crowdfunding for it. And Indiegogo seemed like a platform people were using for comic books. So I decided to use it. And, you know, I drew my comic. I did a crowdfunder. I was very excited. It was a great time drawing it. I got a bunch of support. I had a very modest goal of a thousand dollars, and you know, which is what I needed just to print the thing and make a little money. And ended up with one hundred fifty percent of that, and was really looking forward to just having this little project sort of flying under the radar. I was like, it's a small project, you know, for my friends and people who sort of know what's going on and i hadn't drawn a comic in 30 years so that was fun and you should go on tucker carlson make a million dollars you know you should i should go on what tucker carlson you know he has to show. invite me yeah well you I, can't... I will i will let his producer know Ooh. of what's happening thank you yeah. this, nice. yes anyway uh uh the campaign ended and two days later I get this email that says we've refunded everybody and your thing is gone. And then I immediately started getting messages and texts and stuff from friends that supported it and was like, what's going on? What's happening? And I just like, my heart sank. It was like the other cancellations that I've had, right? Like every time I've been around the block. I got so banned I know... from PayPal. I know what? the feeling. I got yeah. banned from PayPal, oh, God, you know, that. over politics. And there was such jerks to me. I know, I know. Same with Colin Wright. Yeah, it's PayPal. I called him up and they were like, they, they were like, you know what you did, but we can't tell you. It's like, fuck you, dude. Like, these, these terms of service, right? Like you can't, yeah, you can't right. do anything. They're like, we can't tell you anything about how, how you violated the rules, but you know what you did. And it's like, the guy was such a prick, you know, like if he was like, sir, we apologize, da, 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 I'd be like, fine, you know, you're just following the rules. You work there. I can't blame you. But no, no, no. He was quite happy to inform me that that I was terminated. Like, did you did you record know. this? I wish I did. God, yeah, I wish, I wish I did. you did, too. Um, I haven't called them. I mean, there's just no recourse. It came from a no reply email. No. Uh, but I've been, you know, canceled and disinvited from things a number of times. And every time it's this chilling feeling. It's like 
Yeah. It's like the bottom drops out of your stomach. You're in this dystopian mm -hmm. world that you think has, has stopped, right? Every time it's like, oh, I yep. think things are getting better. And then like, it really? happens. And it it's, it, it, it's like, you know, it's one thing for, you know, to be disinvited from, say, a friend's group or something. You realize people don't like you. It feels shitty, right? It feels bad. You're like, okay, whatever. But then it happens from an institution and you're like, oh, shit, like this is bigger than than anything like how could it get to this level where you know in a financial institutions canceling you or an ec academy uh, canceling your college or something and it's like really they they cave to this cult that's where the adults are supposed to be right, right. they're people in positions of responsibility but it's like a, it's like a societal breakdown it's sort like of thing it's like a book, uh, like something kafka had written you know franz yeah. kafka or, like orwell. the trial george, george, orwell. george orwell or franz kafka or uh, 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 Albert Camus, you know, the stranger, like it, it, it feels like that because in the stranger, it's like you did a crime, but you don't know what exactly it is that you did and you're facing trial for it. It's like, hold on a second. I don't know what I did wrong. Well, you know? I know what I did. I mean, people have, I don't, I don't know in this case, right? Like I do feel yeah. like, Indiegogo, I mean, you know what you did wrong, but it's, it doesn't feel right. No, I, unjust. so Indiegogo, I think it would be behoove Indiegogo to have some transparency because like I said before, I don't know if it's because they don't like my politics or they don't like my oh, you know, gender reason. criticism, or it could be because I'm Jewish and they're anti-Semitic. <laughs> it really could be, right? That like should I made, be your Tucker you Carlson right? angle. Yeah. I yeah, made yeah, my Carlson second angle. film yeah. is about Passover and you know, yeah. I, I am Jewish and they could be anti-Semitic. And yeah. until they actually come out and say the reason that they did this i think maybe we should just assume that i'm not white mm. enough for them because they're white supremacists yeah they're crouching it in this you know this uh this pro-transgender thing but really they just hate juice that's a really Probably. Obviously, yeah. obviously there, there's someone in a, in a bit shoot comment section somewhere who also runs indiegogo <laughs> oh by the way speaking of BitChute, break the rules is also on BitChute, and it is also on twitch.tv it is also on uh, my Everywhere. We're not canceled yet. <laughs> no, no Any, still, still going on. Yeah. Anyway, well, I have these surprising. paper copies. I have, I ordered twenty five, just a just a small batch of twenty five comics from a printer after the campaign ended, before it was canceled, because I just wanted to check the printing quality, printer. see after if the I want to do more ended. with them. So I have these. And um, an ironic thing about this comic is that it predicted exactly what happened. It's like this comic is about <laughs> being. It's about its own self being canceled. So there's a character called the Ban Hammer, which is dis <laughs> wait, how's it going? It's good, good, good. Yeah. disappearing women from yep. the internet. <laughs> so it's trust He's got the briefs. <laughs> yes, a trust and safety expert. Amazing. The only thing, Nina, is that uh, in in terms of verisimilitude, um, I I don't see your titty sagging over the uh, the panels. <laughs> On, on this, yeah, we're uh, gonna have to need a little oh, more yeah. evidence live here. Stream. Yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's menopausal. I'm embracing it. So one thing about comics and why it was such a pleasure to draw this is like most comics, female characters have helium breasts. They're just like I and they got a boob window, right? The they got a boob window. For they got a boob. Sometimes a boob window, but I'm actually gonna have a character if I do future issues of. Uh, Agents of Hag, there is going to be a character called the Third Wave, who <laughs> is uh, is optimized for the male gaze. Uh, well, Love she it. should have a she should Love have it. three breasts if she's a Third Wave. She should have three breasts. No, no, she no. has she's the third. She is like, but she's sort of a, a I guess she's like a villain. She's not a, she's not an ally of menopausal women, mm. um, but you know she will eventually become menopausal woman herself. Of course, they always do. They always do. Yes, it happens. So uh, yep. I forgot what the point was about this. Oh, yeah, it was just really fun. It was so much fun to draw menopausal women sagging. But like every every opportunity yeah. these male artists have to make helium breasts, I was like, I'm just going to make them. Could she, the could she use... I was Could gonna she, say, you know, go, the, the, the thing about, the, sorry, Lev, but the, the thing on. about comics that, uh, especially superhero comics, is, and what's been lost now is that, um, you know, in terms of the helium breasts, there's also these like super jacked dudes. I mean, I remember, 
uh, reading a, there's an old X-Men comic where Professor X, who was in a wheelchair the entire time, <laughs> he's jacked. is he's super rich. jacked. He's jacked. <laughs> and so for me, it's like, you know, it's, it's, yeah. the, it's the sort of male and female kind of ideal and the, this romanticized mm. I, I, idea of it. And, um, you know, this idea that, there's, that, there's, that there is a uh, that there is a, a comic <laughs> with, with it, with it, with it, the uh, agents of hag. <laughs> who are like you know menopausal women? It's just it's I love it so much. It's so it's it was so funny to me. I, I, I urge everyone to buy the comic and read it. It's it's very fun. It's very quick read. If well, where only, could, yeah, because it's where could they buy it? Where available. could they buy it now? Yeah, if only I had a link. So um, <laughs> you don't. I, yeah. That's like I don't I don't have a a e store or anything for selling it. I should check my email because I'm really trying to get it up. on this thing called Indie Planet, which just does print on demand. And I submitted it last week, and I still haven't heard from them. Mm. Uh, so it's like, just tell me if you're not gonna Gumroad show be, it. Happen. Gumroad can Gumroad be another good one. Gumroad yeah. is pretty liberal. When it, I don't mean liberal in like the bad sense. Gumroad. Wait, Gumroad's a print-on-demand platform. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Do they do comic books? They do. It's expensive, but they do it. Yeah. Gumroad. Okay, I better check that out because I would much rather people just order them on demand than. Uh, yeah you know do obviously cost more than whatever. an indiegogo style thing right because it's not mass you know it's not mass printed but yeah you, you could well my you my indiegogo ones were were expensive mm. anyway because it was such a small run well let's yeah. uh well oh go mm. on I was say, Anita, how much did how much uh, did you raise in terms of uh, money on indiegogo uh fifteen hundred dollars you know thousand dollar goal 150 mm -hmm. percent of that about fifteen hundred it's all gone of course and they won't let me access the records either of and course. and oh here's a nice conspiracy theory so there's been just you know people are like did they intend to do this from the start uh and just collect data on your supporters unlikely unlikely but it's like you, you know, know what, right? why, why did they wait until the campaign ended to cancel me why did they know. do that That's like why question. didn't if they didn't want it why didn't they just like let it yeah just cancel it mid mid run right why and, did they just and, reject yeah. it they should because they vet everything before it goes up. They won't put anything up. You go through a submission process. So they could have right. just rejected it. They could have canceled it mid thing. But no, they waited until the campaign mm. was closed. Mm -hmm. Actually, they waited until the campaign was closed. And then they had this like automatic opt into infinite thing. And I, I canceled. I opted out of that. Yeah. And then like four hours after I opted out of that, they canceled it. So here's so, like, the important. Were they, were they planning the whole time? I'll never know. Never know. Well, here's the important question. Legally speaking, are they in the wrong? Well, they have a term, a terms of service that lets them do anything terminate. for any reason. Yeah, they can terminate you for any reason. It's, it's, it's. You Whether have that's no legal, I mean, pe people might consider challenging that because people tend it's not, not been to done read yet. terms of services, and it's like nobody. Is no gonna... one's done it yet because, like, it's just like with Twitter and Facebook and you know Instagram just banning people, even people who've had their accounts for ten plus years, million plus followers. You know that there there could be an argument if taken to court that this was a you know a deprivation of your business. You know, destroyed. Like you know, if if you're in a city and 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 say the uh, your landlord or your city decided overnight to just evict you you'd be able to sue your city and, and, and win, right? Like they can't do that. There's a contract with the, with the land, you know, with the city, with, the, with your landlord and so on. So they can't just evict you. But on, you know, on, on the internet, they can't, right? There's just no recourse for it. And there's no, there's no precedent for, for such a lawsuit. It has to be done by someone with, like, I guess, deep pockets. You know, you need someone like Peter Thiel to step in and basically uh, finance you, which yeah. would suck. Yeah, well, because, if anyone I mean, wants wants me to be yeah. the the case or a case, because I've heard of a lot of cancellations, but how many how many comic books have been canceled, or just projects have been canceled after being fully funded? I don't know. I mean, and the just, campaigns ending. The first. Yeah, he also might be the first. So yeah, Peter, Peter, if you're listening, you know, I'm willing to go to court <laughs> if you fund it. So, I mean, th that is kind of like the weird divide that's happening right now on certain issues where because there's not that much of a and i think it is changing but because there's not that much of a support network among quote unquote classical liberals a lot of people who are in positions like uh, clifton is like uh, you are nina they have to kind of choose a side and at that point if the side that's being chosen is one where there's plenty of things that you really really disagree with it's a very strange position for people to be in which is why I feel like people who are also on the right, you know, people who are journalists or uh, video creators, 
I almost feel like there is going to be a certain amount of pressure where if there is like a certain issue that they really feel different on, they're not going to be able to say that much because it's not going to give them anything in return. Like they're not going to get that Tucker Carlson appearance. They're not going to get anything that's going to help them. They, they will. will. He will give it. Yes, yeah. He's hundred percent willing to give his uh, platform to anyone who's willing to speak out against this. I mean, he has leftists on his show, right? Max, Max Blumenthal, hardcore leftists. He has them on a show all the time. So, mm. yeah. Uh, Oh, no, 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 just, just, just to, just to be clear about what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about people who are within General. a particular sphere of being like in, let's say, more right wing adjacent um, content creator sphere. So if you're within that sphere, it's going to be way difficult to sell an idea that is contrary to whatever it is that people already align themselves on, because your fans are not really going to be into that idea. And what are you going to do? Right. I can, I, I mean, can, you know, I, I can sort of provide an example for that. I mean, you know, in terms of, um, you know, my views on, I mean, I'm an atheist, and um, oh my god, you know, I know, and uh, and and I'm, and, and I'm pro-choice, but at the same, but you know, oh my god, I know, I, I, well, that, well, but Nina, but but you have, you, that, that's exactly right. You know, I mean, I think um, just recently, um, just today, maybe that the news came out that uh, in Alabama, there's some, you know, there's some. Legislation may be being passed to, um, you know, to restrict abortion rights. And it's like, you know, do I, you know, do I comment on this? And, you know, I've clashed with people before, but I mean, what, what Lev is talking do about, it. it's, it's tough because it, it can be tough because, you know, you're, you're in this position where like, you know, you don't really, you, you have these sort of uh, these beliefs, but then um, they, 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 they clash with, but, 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 but you're, you're paid, you, but you're placed among people who are, and people who are, who are, who are mm -hmm. sort of clinging to you now are, are people who are maybe on the center right or on the right. And it's like, well, you know, and, and to be fair, um, you know, I, I've, I have been very heartened by the amount of, I mean, you know, just as an atheist, for instance, I mean, the, 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 the Christians that I know have been way, way, way more even keeled over the past couple of years. Um, and then, a lot of the secular uh, secularists that I know, but um, it, it can be it, it can put you in a very kind of I won't say difficult but kind of weird position because I mean maybe it's that that that, that political homeless kind of thing where you're like yeah it's not really my thing but uh, you know how do I keep the you know how do I keep my momentum going how do I keep you know this whatever it is that I'm doing doing going it puts you in a kind of awkward position so I don't make, maybe how that do kind you keep of illuminate sweet things. how do you keep your supporters sweet right you don't want them to like turn against you necessarily yeah and and, and on an issue like 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 abortion specifically I mean it's very very I mean on both sides of the issue that very people have very very strong emotions about it and um it's one of those things where I, th I think I think abortion specifically is um an issue that sort of really really paints in, in a in a in a stark contrast you know where the two sides fall but also kind of the, the hypocrisy the the hypocrisies on both sides and um yeah. you know it's kind of difficult to navigate sometimes but uh, you know that, that, that that's you know neither here nor there but i'm just sort of sort of trying to make that point of like where the trying to build on left's point about how difficult it can be sometimes na to navigate that territory radical feminists I, have been dealing with this for a while and hmm. kara donsky has been on Tucker Carlson a number of times and gotten a lot of shit for it. And there's actually a huge fight right now, maybe even a split among radical feminists. I, they don't the want to, they, they're refusing to be on Tucker's show, right? Like, and then they're getting- Some of them are, some of them. And it's like, yeah. there's the ones that are like Megan Murphy, Kardansky, me. We'll talk to anyone. Like anyone yeah. that will listen because to Because like us, you don't want to just talk. preach to the choir. What's the point yeah. of preaching to the choir? Well, I mean, right. I told what about the, the, these, yeah. these feminists, I, I, said, I, I said to them on Twitter, I said, you know, you're preaching to the choir here. I mean, you already have the audience that's going to listen to you. Why don't you reach out to other people? Like, it's not just, and a lot of people pointed this out in the, in the comments. A lot of liberals, in fact, watch Tucker's show. They said that, you know, like at least half of, of Tucker's audience are not even conservatives. They're liberals yeah, who watch I mean, the show. So Tucker, reach them. Tucker, I mean, he's like the biggest star on Fox News. And, you know, and, and I do watch Tucker Carlson, but I watch it with the caveat that, that he is a, you know, I mean, I see him as a center right um, um, commentator and he frames issues from that mindset. And um, so I, I can freely say that, you know, well, yeah, OK, Tucker, like, I, I think you're talking bullshit there. I disagree with you on that. But, uh, you know, but he but he is very admirable in, in the sense that he will he will have people on that, that, that just co are completely uh opposed to his opinions and, and he'll and he'll talk to them and it's like don't you want to reach um you know if you can 
as broad an audience as possible. And you know, I mean that the guy, his videos get millions of views all the time. Don't yep. you know why not? Why not try and get your ideas out there to to an audience which may not which may not be as receptive to them. Um, it's it's just very it's very bizarre. People, you know, they kind of um, they 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 cut off their nose to spite the face in in, in a sense. There is an example uh, just today. I was uh, messaging this lady who is a uh, black uh, neuroscience PhD candidate, and it was for a uh, debate that I'm thinking of having with uh, the subject being. Uh, I believe this one was about uh, diversity and inclusion. So I uh, messaged her about this, and I don't even think she saw the uh, post. I think she may have just looked at my profile and seen, you know, that I have a lot of heter heterodox uh, guests on. And she just wrote, you know, the neuroscience candidate. She wrote, just wrote, hell no, on Twitter. And that's it. <laughs> she probably saw me. Probably saw me. It's like, oh, that Elon Musk Jung is a racist, fascist, white supremacist, you know. Uh, could be, could be, but this is what I'm finding that people who I disagree with, nevertheless, who are on the right, they are way, way more receptive. You know, like even like deep right, they are way more receptive to having yeah. a conversation. Like Nina, I've talked you're, to literal yeah. fascists. I've talked to literal fascists who are more than happy to have a conversation, and like I don't because want to nobody will talk to them. I don't want to talk to them anymore either. <laughs> that, because I didn't quite realize that you know how far right they were. Yeah, uh, who was who was that Nazi guest that? I Wait, talked to on the, the first uh, the counter semite as the counter semite. A... Yes, <laughs> he was lovely to what, talk to. What an interesting name! What, an interesting <laughs> what a nice name. guy! <laughs> I don't know if he was a nice guy, but it was like mm. we had a conversation. You know, I was no, capable the of talking the vibe to him. the vibe that I'm getting a lot since I uh, am somebody who is very versed in uh, the four chan lore uh, and the uh, pole lore to be specific. The vibe that I'm finding oh, is that a lot of the people who are in that sphere. It's like that quote, uh, the re uh, I think the real jihad was the friends we made along the way, you know, with this uh, memory TV picture, yeah. meaning that I don't even think a lot of them take this stuff that seriously. A they lot don't. of them are being very edgy because they know that this is like the most extreme thing you could possibly think. A lot of them are Mexican. Some of them are Jewish. For some reason, yeah, like Eric Stryker. He's the one I talked to, and, and, and he is Mexican, which is weird. But by the way, Cl Clifton, I want to tell you about Eric Stryker. There was this one podcast. I don't remember who he was with, but where he was saying how horrible jazz was, and he was comparing jazz to classical music, and he was making this impression of jazz, like do 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 like that. And it was just, I got to send you this clip. It's it's amazing. Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting too because you 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 bring up you know Fortran for Fortran Fortran oops Fortran oops. <laughs> uh, you bring up that's a whole different website. Nowadays. It might as well be um, no, it's the same website now. It's the same. <laughs> website you know just put r9k they're but just it, but, making but, people trans there but but it's but it's you know it, it's funny because you you will be painted as some kind of extremist by the kinds of you know activists that we're talking about and it's like no if you go to 4chan if you go to poll which i go to every once in a while it's like dude you can't scroll you can't scroll down two two posts without seeing something about jews or or n words and i'm like these are people who are actually you know saying extremist things yeah, and and these people have no idea what extreme actually is until they go. You know, like for me, I'm like, I don't like what I read there, but I'm like, wow, wow, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 it's out there. People think that, and for so it's sort of desensitizing in a way. But there is so, also so a difference because there are posts that counter whatever posts happen to be more prevalent on 4chan. There will be one post that will be pro something, and then right next to it, one against extreme. it. You don't yeah, get that on Reddit. People on there. There's super, true, lots true. of the really, really trans people on 4chan. 4chan. <laughs> 4chan. I like it. 4chan. It's going to catch on. That's, that's, a, a, that's a programming yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah, 4chan. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but no, no, I, I was like looking at stuff about um, people talk about like, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the pandemic, for instance. There, there are people that, there who are like, you know, it's a big. Oh, wait, we're on and, YouTube. And we're all... on YouTube. We got to be careful. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I am going to be very careful in my <laughs> Thank language. You. Thank but you. People who talk about, you know, everyone's going to die if they catch this virus. Um, and also people who are like, there is no there is no virus, you know, yeah, so, so it's just it just it just. It just goes back to what you're saying about, you know, there actually is more of a diversity of opinion, ironically, on this sort of, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know if I call it a fringe website, uh, than you would see on a place like a Reddit, for instance. It's very interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean, Reddit is very homogenous when it comes to opinions, right? And and you, you can kind of 
picture all the people <clears> posting <throat> on a Reddit thread. Like they're all balding 35 year old dudes who are slightly overweight and live in their mom's basements. I mean, literally all of them. They're they're, they're like quadruple vaxxed, you know, like they, they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> I was really surprised with the way vaxxing became like a thing of the left. Like there there was this time when it was like wasn't clear. It, was, it wasn't on one side or the anti. other. They were like anti like they, it they was were, a bunch of hippies. No, 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 no. What I mean is like even in Trump's time, there were like even Kamala was like, don't trust this thing. Trump is making it. Like there's a tweet, you can find it, where she hmm. says something like that. You can't trust this thing. It's being rushed out. Trump is making it. You trust Trump. Like so if, if Trump was still in power, they would probably be, you know. Uh, uh, anti, right? Yeah. But but now they're pro. But I think maybe Trump, in a way, was smart. Kind of. I mean, depends on where you stand on on the whole Fauci thing. But you know, he managed to make Fauci the face of it, so that he wouldn't be the face of it. And maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. Right? Depending on how, how you view the uh, the thing. But but if it, they didn't have Fauci, if, the, if Fauci wasn't there and it was just Trump leading Operation Warp Speed, I think most of the liberals nowadays would be very anti. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, well, well, everyone knows that the efficacy and safety of a particular medical product uh, depends on who happens to be the president at that particular moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. I so I when like I was very grateful that they had vaccines, and I was like, "Yay, I'm going to get vaccinated!" Thank God, and I got double vaxxed. Uh, and the second shot that I got made me really, really sick, and yeah. then. I got a booster, but a different brand. Like I'd had Moderna and I was like, I'm going to try Pfizer for my booster. And I got even more very, very sick. So no more boosters for me. I can totally believe that Same these ad adverse effects that well, people are talking about are real. Bad. Well, it's very strange because I mean, the Moderna, it's, it's, a, it's a higher dose. I mean, it's a much more intense, concentrated dose. And people don't really talk about that that much. And, and you see people who are like, you know, I'm going to, mix and match shots i'm gonna get my flu shot yada 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 and i'm like oh god no don't I'm like, do please that. please <laughs> show do please show me that all the peer-reviewed evidence you have that there's not going to be any sort of conflict and it's very strange because this goes back into this conversation on on you know the quote-unquote left where you can't really broach that conversation and for me i'm like dude mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at Tylenol or ibuprofen and, and looking at, you know, what, what are the side effects or whatever? And, and should I be taking this? But you if you can't talk even about... mix those, right? I mean, like Tylenol <laughs> or ibuprofen, if you mix those, you're going to have complications. Like you're going to have serious problems breathing. Why instance. do you hate modern medicine, Ian? <laughs> you're going to grow a second head. Speaking, by the way, speaking of modern medicine, this is the other thing that I notice is a very big difference between uh, left and right spheres, which is so many people from the right today, whether we're talking about things like seed oils, whether we're talking about just taking care of yourself, there is so much more of an emphasis on what yeah, can you do from within Not, yeah. and also from the, like, yeah, like the diet. But the GMOs, you, right? GMOs like the leading cause of obesity in America, whereas they're banned in Europe, they're banned in, well, most developed countries in Asia even, and, but, uh, in America, everything is, you know, uh, 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 sugar, right? It's, it's the, Wait, it's that the, used to be the lefty the thing. That used to yeah. always yeah. be the lefty used thing. thing. No, the like granola the right hippies. There's, I know. There's, there's all these articles about how if you care about your fitness, you're more than likely to be a conservative and probably a bigot. Like, they always add that, oh, yeah, you're going to be a bigot as well. It's like, okay. Well, what gets me a... is that if you care about free, free speech used to be the lefty thing. Yeah, and it's now crazy. it's the righty thing. I no, made it's this, like uh, this, healthy uh, at every size, you know. But like, I, I made this. Uh, you want to be. I made this semi-viral tweet that said, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was something like, "Look at all these far-right extremists telling you to read books and take vitamins." <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nina, okay. may, maybe another uh, villain that you could have for your comic could be kind of like a Lizzo, you know, like a giant. I don't know if you want to go that direction, have other people that want to sacrifice you, but uh, that could be a potential uh, thing because Her that superpower is... Superpower is twerking. Well, yes, sidekick, exactly. I mean, one of, sidekick is already, you know... Kind of well, rather plump, yeah. Well, she she could be yeah, she's the be main like morbidly obese and evil, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Can't be a good person. Can't be I mean, a good the person. Whole, yeah. The whole Lizzo thing is annoying because for me, because you know, like you know, I I I look at her and as a fellow artist, I'm like, you know, she she's good at what she does. She's she talented. is good. She's classically she's, trained. Exactly. Yeah. She, you know, she she is gifted and she and she she's put in the work. 
but this that you know she put out a statement recently or an article recently about like you know that this body is is art and i'm like i'm thinking to myself well you know as someone who enjoys the fact that we have gifted artists around who are successful i want you to be around for as long as possible yeah not and, five years from now and then die right you know, you know what i mean so you know take care problem. of yourself and it's going to help you as, as an artist your, your body is your instrument i mean adele lost all that weight and yep. you know and good for her but she got so much backlash about it and they hated her for it they were like they trying to her cancel her they were like you betrayed the 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 you know the fat movement the body positive uh, movement and it's like how about embracing the fact that she's body positive about being healthy you know why yeah, can't guys you know that? i mean just even on broadway you know i mean when, when you're in that echelon being being fit is a part of your job that is a part of your job yeah. and you, you can't do you know eight shows a week or you know be traveling on the road all the time eight and not days. have a, a level Ten of conditioning days. you know that 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 yep. that that lends itself to performing at a high level and you know th but the fact that we that it's becoming more and more taboo to say that is, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the wake of a, a pandemic where the virus, you know, uh, primarily nearly... affects people who are unhealthy. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And uh, like... so people, they would rather protect um, mm -hmm. fat people from from words than from a virus which can kill them. And it's and it's yep. the most absurd thing ever. You know, it's it's funny. Like the you know the gaming community has this reputation of having like morbidly obese guys eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew, right? Like that's the that's the narrative. That's what gamers are. And yet, if you look at the top streamers, the people on Twitch, the ones with the most viewers, uh, the best gamers, you know, the people making millions of dollars every year just playing video games professionally, they're all fit. They're all incredibly fit. They got muscles, they work out, and they have to. They have a regimen, they don't eat badly. I mean, they might, you know, drink a sponsored drink once in a while, but for them, it's about being healthy. And if you read all the interviews, and, and you know, like interviewers, the journalists will ask them, why do you keep this regimen? I mean, you're just playing video games. They'll be like, no, I mean, I have to be alert. I have to be at the top of my game. And that means thinking clearly. If I'm just eating garbage all day and drinking sugar, I'm going to be sluggish. I'm going to be unhealthy. I'm going to feel sick all the time. I won't be able to sleep properly. That means being tired. I mean, it's anyone who's in the performance business, whether it's music, acting, or in this case, playing video games on stream, uh, you have to be fit and healthy. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like, it's not even about looking good. It's just about being able to function, you know? Yeah, mentally speaking function of, as speaking well. Speaking of that, what are you drinking, Clifton? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it looks a... like a jug of milk. <laughs> I know. No, it's just a, it's a, this big thing. I got a target. I really love it. But, uh, you know, it's it's just wa ice water, but it's oh, got okay. like it's got like blood orange uh, juice in it mm. and, oh. and like a, half a lemon. Nice. And so I'm like, I'm, nice. I'm being kind of bougie right now. With, okay. uh, with my, and by the way, with, uh, nice. Clifton, speaking of Lizzo, there was a show that's on Amazon Prime called Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls. And it's spelled G-R-R-R-L-S. Now, that is an example of like a lot of these women, they could probably do things that I know I can't do, but at the same time, the amount of pressure like that break that takes. A man. Yes, exactly. And but the amount of uh, the amount of pressure that that would take on their bodies, I wonder if this is something we'd be looking back on like 50 years down the line and saying like, "Holy shit, this was the equivalent of what they were doing to um, what's that actress Wizard of Oz, uh, Judy Garland." They were doing a Judy Garland where they were drugging her up in order for her to be active and then fall asleep. And you know, it's like, what exactly yep. is going on here? Why well, doesn't the, anybody speak out? The Soviet uh, gymnasts, you know. Nobody talked about it when it was happening to them. They were sexually assaulted, like ritually, really, you know, and forced to perform some of the worst exercises uh, ever forced on any athlete. It's only now that we know about it, right? When, because all this stuff came out. But I mean, even if it, even in uh, Team USA, I mean, the, the, those athletes were all, you know, subjected to all kinds of abuse, sexual abuse and physical abuse. And uh, the FBI was actually protecting the guy doing it, right? The, the, the doctor, he has been like sentenced to prison for this stuff. But, you know, he was doing it to all these, uh, these athletes and nobody wanted to talk about it. It was just like a thing. It's like, oh, yeah, it happens. You know, you just sweep it under the rug because they're winning. They're winning medals. That's all that matters. And it's the same thing with these girls on, you know, the Lizzo show where clearly they're being subjected to some kind of, you know, physical or mental abuse where it's like they got to eat, you know, and that's that's weird. 
that's so weird to me. Well, it's also, I mean, I think it's also specific in terms of Lizzo. It's specific to a lot of black Americans. I mean, if you go back and look at pictures of black people from the 70s, where we wore way more form-fitting clothes, the men and the women. I mean, you see yep. people with, with beautiful skin, just beautiful people, you know, who, and they're not like bodybuilders, but they just, they look, they're very, they just seem very, um, not necessarily in shape, but they're just, they're just lithe. And, um, and mm -hmm. they, they look good, they look healthy. And um, now there is this thing where, you know, I mean, the, the, the CDC, you know, despite its problems, I mean, for, for years now, the, the data has been that uh, black women from the ages of 18 to like 70 something um, are, you know, uh, the over 70 percent of them, I think, are, are overweight or obese. And um, so part of it is a is a is a cultural thing as as well. So there's a whole sort of audience and market out there for, you know, these um, uh, big, big women and they're they're highly validated. And um, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's very it's just very short sighted and kind of sad. And it didn't I, I don't think it always used to be this way. I, and I don't know. Um, mm. I don't why know do, what why do you think was. it is? Why do you think it came about? And how much do you think all something like food corporations have to do with some of these things? Because they do end up benefiting, if we're honest here. Well, I think part of it, you know, if you're talking about the, uh, if you're talking about Black America, you're talking about a, a, I mean, it's a sensitive subject, but you're talking about a, a lower income um, community. And you, and, you know, I mean, I've been to so many cities, Baltimore, D.C., um, you know, even my, my hometown, Newport News, Atlanta, you see these um these low income neighborhoods with lots of black people in them. And what do you see around them? You know, Dunkin Donuts, uh, uh, Burger King, um, <clears throat> McDonald's, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, and you see people on typically on the left who would say, like, well, why are all these businesses, you know, in this community? And, and it's like, well, the, the food is cheap and it tastes good. And if you're not making a lot of money and you got kids to feed, it's a it's an easy and fast solution. So I think that 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 is part of it, um, definitely. But um, I, it, it, I it's also subsidized. it's subsidized. Coca Cola subsidizes it. They literally paid the uh, uh, NAACP to claim that any sort of tax on sugar would be racist, and so they went out of their way to campaign uh, against uh, sugar taxation. And uh, as a result of that, you know, when you have a, a food stamp, it will pay for your Coca Cola and all of your food. So that. Why That's part of it? it. That's part of it. But also, I mean, it, it, it's also cultural, honestly. I, I, I did a show, mm -hmm. it's like a, a, a decade ago, actually. I was in San Francisco, and uh, there was a point in the show where I was shirtless. And at this point, you know, I mean, I'm lifting, um, you know, f maybe five times a week, and I'm eating five meals a day, and and um, and I'm, I'm in really good shape. Because like, like I said before, you know, it's part of my job to be in shape. We're doing this, you know, really grueling musical and yada, yada, yada. So I had, I had an aunt... And a lot of family come to see me in this show, which is really great. But then afterwards, <laughs> I remember my, my aunt comes up to me and she goes, are you eating, baby? You look kind of thin. Are you? And, and I'm like, I literally eat like five times a day and I'm, 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 ripped, as, I'm ripped as hell. And so, so part of it, I think, is this idea of like, you know, that there's soul food and, mm. you know, are, are you eating enough? So I think that that's also part of it as well. These um, these sort of ideas of, of nutrition, but at the same time, now you got rappers talking about, you know, rapping about veganism. So maybe that, that'll <laughs> change. So, you know, who, who knows? Mm. It reminds me also of uh, Jewish households as well, when uh, the uh, Jewish uh, grandmother would complain that you're not eating enough, you know, and you have all these little Jewish boys who are bullied at school because they're like so big and fat. And it's like, like, yep. you know, I, and I love my Jewish family. You know, they didn't. Portuguese families are the same way, you know, I was raised in Portuguese household and, uh, you know, I'm like I actually half Portuguese. Some people don't believe me. That's true um, because they're like, oh, you look Asian, though. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking mixed race. <laughs> and, you know, there's this culture, in, you know, in Portuguese culture where it's like your grandmother is going to cook as much as she wants for you and she's going to make you eat it, you know. Yes, exactly. Now, somebody was saying over here, Jake Twister was saying the great mother archetype. So if you recall, there was that statue, this little statuette that was found, a uh, Neolithic statue. Of yeah, this, oh, that. Nina, I mean, what am yeah, I talking I about? Yeah, I know, she's in sadomasochism. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, Nina, you could talk to this. Like, what exactly is this uh, statue that I'm talking about here? Well, you might be talking about... Uh, the one great. that's covering her breast with, like, little Oh, that one. And... Willendorf. Willendorf. Yeah, Willendorf. The, the, the Venus, Venus of Willendorf. 
Yes, exactly. So they found nope. an interesting thing about it, right? They, they figured that it was actually a woman's self understanding of what she looked like if she would have looked uh, down. Yeah, I don't think people were. I mean, that's one popular. That's like thing a new right one. Now, that's like a new one. Yeah, there's I mean, one that says she just, you know, that's the women's beauty standard. I mean, or rather, physical beauty standards were like we want fat women, but then this one new theory is that actually we don't. It's just the way that a woman perceives herself when she looks at herself and mm. she's pregnant. To me, it seems pretty obvious that, like... I think someone else if, made if it. the guy did it. Yeah, if you, well, maybe a woman did. I don't know. It's, it's like, right. we're, well, we're, say... living, we're living in a very weird time. This is, like, the only time in human history where... Yeah. Uh, we've had ob where there's been an obesity epidemic mm. right this yeah, is 70 not percent of americans are overweight and 40 percent are obese that is insane it's and, insane and people and are, are are confused as to why uh, america had a, a bad uh woo flu outcome and i'm like yep. well that's part of it guys but why aren't we, why aren't we talking about that mm -hmm. in europe it was fine you know more or less like eh. because they don't have an obesity problem and they had old people dying i it guess wasn't, it, yeah i don't think it was fine anywhere but anyway uh so it's weird like we live in this time where obesity is epidemic and there's all these social mm. issues around it too i think for most of human history and prehistory that was not the case so i think yeah, it's pretty normal to, that it was to go outside and work right we had to toil the fields but uh, before even there were fields right there was hunting yeah. and gathering and i just fit. think that all of this have was food available to us all the time yeah, this yeah. was an exaggeration of what was, you know, a desirable state, right? Like if you're yeah. like a little fat because you're well fed and you're fertile mm -hmm. and you're pregnant, that's a good thing. And then you're gonna you're gonna emphasize yeah. that yeah. because you, just like it's not like you're gonna having, see it in real life. Just like, you know, uh for a period of time in the nineties people are really into large breasts. So they would, you know, get augmented, mm -hmm. right? I right. think that's a timeless, that, 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 that's, yeah. that's a timeless uh, 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 obsession, Ian. And the yeah. oversized I mean, suits as well. Yeah. Fine, Especially the way, among... They were like uh, bolted on knockers, you know what I mean? Yeah, like shop teachers, like Canadian yeah, the shop teacher types. Shop yeah, the teachers. Canadian shop teacher types. And it's like, that's a bit much, right? That's not actually attractive anymore. That's just, you know, ridiculous. Right? It's, it's obscene. Now, there's yeah. an interesting thing about uh, Camille Paglia, which I know, Nina, you know of uh, Camille Paglia. There was an interesting take that she had on the Venus of Willendorf, where she was talking about how womenness is a lot more of like this liquid, kind of like this over, like this big, uh, mysterious, oozing thing. And maleness is supposed to be like the Greek statues, you know, Original. very statuesque, mathematical, precise. And she talks about human culture as kind of being a battle between those two aspects, which she calls the Apollonian and the Dionysian. So Dionysian, that would be more of like the swamp, the the womanly muck, whatever you want to call it. And the I don't mean to be offensive here, by the, the way. Soft I'm just saying here. The blob and the hard, sharp-edged block. Exactly, exactly. Do you agree with uh, her definition here, how, how she sees it? I don't know. I'd have to read what she actually said. It's a good book, Sexual Persona. That's I have it on my, it's actually, a, you know, right next to my bed. I want to read it. Uh, Nina, I, this is totally kind of a, a digression, but I had a question for you. You, you said this earlier, but why do you, why do you believe that um, women's liberation will, will never be achieved? That is a, yes, I love that. So I've been, of course, thinking about this all the time for the last five years since I've, you know, been turfened. Uh, okay, so one people are like smash the patriarchy smash the patriarchy and it's like well i miss the 90s how are you going to smash the fun. patriarchy without getting rid of men right there it's like you can't do it men and what are about trans people isn't that even like harder because now they're claiming to be women yeah i'm trying to ge i've been trying to genocide my podcast co-host corinna Cohn <laughs> since we started and it's just not working i'm terrible at it we went to new orleans for the weekend you try to slip, slip some poison in the. I've been uh... try it's just like it's not <laughs> happening, okay? Uh, no, but I, I don't ever think of genociding trans people except in jest. But you know, sometimes it's like, well, how could we get rid of all the men? And it's just like, no, that just won't work. It wouldn't just, work. 
it, we can't. Society we, wouldn't function, you know. I mean, just like men can't get rid of women, it just wouldn't. I know. We well, four chan begs to differ with the artificial wombs. In fact, I have a oh, patron who is very much for the idea. Well, I don't want to speak out of turn for him, uh, but uh, no, 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 no. Good, good guy. But there is a theory that he has that maybe in the future artificial wombs would be able to be there in place of women for yeah. that's what giving the plan birth. Is. That's what right, let planning. me finish. Let me fi we'll, we'll okay, yeah, yeah, digress yeah. on this later. So um, now that I acknowledge and accept sexual dimorphism, which is not fun. It's not fun when you're a feminist who was born in 1968, who really wants to believe that men and women can do the same things. We can't. The reality is that men have like 50% more upper body strength than women. Men have testosterone, which may or may not be the cause of just more physical violence among men. We're it sexually is. It is dimorph actually, yeah, yes. okay. We're sexually dimorphic species and we can't change that. So everything yep. else aside, we're these animals where one of them, you know, one sex class of these animals is stronger and more violent. And it's like that's always gonna be part of Mm -hmm. that's always going to be part of things. Now, m that said, I'm we not going like, men, I'm not awful. going like, oh, let's just throw it all away then. And, you know, just all be submissive. I call it a struggle, right? Like, I don't think, yeah. I don't think we're going to achieve actual liberation of all women as a class. I believe in the but, quality of opportunity, right? Like, yeah, I, I, I do too. Um, yeah, if you're capable, and, go for it. Yeah. And so I like, there's going to be a struggle always. And I believe in that struggle, but there's not going to be a win. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that a lot of women don't, they just don't want it. They don't want women's liberation. A lot of women are perfectly content to be submissive to men. Like the ones I told you about in Sweden, right? They have perhaps the freest society in the world, and yet they choose to be, you know, to live uh, submissive or traditional lives. And it makes yeah, them happy. I mean, they're, they're not necessarily the same thing, but I look at like dynamics. I look at the dynamics of what the, the milieu that I'm in. Um, and mm. as I said, like women are driving both sides of this, right? Like there's yeah. women like me who are saying no and setting boundaries. And then there's other women that are just submitting to everything, no. but they're still being neat. Like they're not submitting to other women, but they're, they're broadcasting their submission to men. And, yep. uh, and then there's like, you know, men have real problems too, as we know. Um, and women love men. Most women are heterosexual. Most yep. women will uh, collude with their own abusers. They'll certainly collude with the abusers of other women. And, and they collude with trans people too. Yeah, and men. it's like, and so like you can't get rid of men. Um, and then like most of the women that you're trying to create solidarity with it's sisterhood, it's are a not, joke. yeah, they're yeah. not gonna, I mean, yeah. they're gonna be more working for Just the like, men. It's like, it's like the incel crowd. They think they can convince all men to, think like them and it's like no men love women most men are well, straight heterosexual men and we well, you know, are not does that to, answer your question women. clifton it does it does and, and what's interesting to me is that um and i i used to be sort of um very i don't know super deep um but you know it, it's called the manosphere and i actually have a i have a podcast i need to release about this that i had a conversation with about it and um i, I used to uh, uh bristle at the idea that these um the, you know, and and when we say manosphere, it's a very very broad term. There's very there's different sec, sects. S S E C T C S. There's not much sex uh, going on. Well, no, but 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 here's but here's the thing because because there's this idea that I mean, mm. look, because you have the yeah, the pickup artists, and then you have like like the make yeah, out who 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 you know they're 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 so opposed to each other. You know, you have the you have the pickup artists who are like, yeah, you know, it's all about gaming and 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 racking up notches. But the MGTOWs are saying, well, you guys are obsessed with pussy, so uh, you know what, what's wrong with you? But um, but at, at the very end of it, there's this idea where where they are only using, uh, they're either putting women out of their lives entirely, or they're only using them for sex in in their lives. And Sorry. there's this idea like where, where that's a, sort of sort of a healthy way to to function. I'm like, Do guys, no, you know, you, you we need women. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, it, it's it's and it's not a weak thing to say that it's just it's, it's like, yeah, you know, as men, we can be we can be a-holes and, and 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 women are annoying, but we need them. 
And I think, you know, you said, um, I forgot the word you used, Nina, but, but I feel like there's always going to be a tension there because we're so, because we, because we are so different and we have different needs. I mean, my last relationship, I, I just, I, you know, I, 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 I began to understand that I don't think of like safety and security in the same way that, that my girlfriend did. And that was a whole, physically and emotionally. Um, and, and that was a different revelation for me. But if I'm someone who is in this ideology where I, I want to eradicate all the differences, then I'm, then I'm erasing what's unique about the both of us. And, and how am I going to build a healthy relationship if I don't even understand my own partner? And she's mm -hmm. in this ideology where she can't understand me as well, because, you know, it's, it's, it's a very strange thing. But it's, it's, just, it's very funny to see the sort of two poles play opposite each other. And, um, you know, and I've, I met lots of women in the um, show business who they felt guilty. They, they, would be, they would be moms, right? And uh, they felt guilty because they, they were pulled between wanting to spend more time with their kids and, and feeling a pressure to succeed in their careers. And to me, I'm like, well, you can't take it with you. But, um, you know, but your kids live on after you. So it seems to me the most important job is raising, you know, is raising kids. It's not that you're you're confined only to this idea or this role of being a mom or a housewife or a homemaker or whatever. But um, but it's just I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of ranting, but this is taking taking a broader perspective and seeing how people kind of fall into different camps and, and factions and how it becomes sort of extreme on both sides. Like, guys, you know, we all have to be here together. I think we, have to people... we have to figure it out and negotiate it. But there's I, I don't think there's ever going to be a world where. Uh, men and women don't have uh, tension with each other. You know what I mean? And and mm -hmm. maybe we should we should embrace mm -hmm. that and, and understand that. Maybe we 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 would get farther as a society if we said, you know what, man, it is what it is. Men, we can be jerks, and women can be annoying, and we have to figure out, a, you know, a way to negotiate the, these relationships, you know, professionally and personally and romantically. I well, that's that's if the, the strongest men of women behind them. You know, there's just facts. Abraham but that's Lincoln. but that's if the relationships start to begin with. I think what a lot of the robot 9K people like Ian mentioned before are dealing with today is that correct me if I'm wrong, but there used to be, you know, in the good old days where boys were boys and men were men, there used to be a time back in the day when there were not this incredibly quick access to the top tier alpha men all at once. So you couldn't just take Tinder and find the guy who then you're going to be with for some time. Maybe he's going to be the one, maybe not, depending on whether he has some other women around him who may be better than you. And if that's the situation that a lot of women are in, where a lot of women today would want to go for those high value men, but not all of them get to be the one, then what exactly happens to the men who are, let's say, on the lower part of the period those men need to lower their standards because the issue is they're going after supermodels they're going after tens you know it's like it's not going to work out no matter what are they only going after tens though are they that, not they going are after being unreasonably like they're being unreasonably their expectations are unreasonable i would say they want women who are you know either 17 you know they're, yeah they're kind of gross you know they'll be like well i want her to be a virgin they'll say stuff like that they want her to be a virgin they want her to be <laughs> no hymen no diamond <laughs> yeah like it, it's like insane <laughs> they, say that. they say that they do yeah they do say it the, the, the requirements are insane it's like First of all, you kind of have to be desirable, even if you want to have a chance of anyone, not let alone this perfect woman or perfect girl in, in you know in my estimation, this is what they want. Like, and so maybe first of all, have realistic expectations. Secondly, work on yourself. You can't like the issue with them is that they just expect a woman to just pop into their life and 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 just throw herself at them. It's like, well, look at you. What are you doing with your life? Oh, you're living with your parents. Oh, you you have a grocery store at a dead-end job. You know, like, a, uh, I mean, not a grocery store, a dead-end job. You are, <laughs> you're working a dead-end job at a grocery store. And, like, what are you doing with your life? You have to have ambition. You have to be the person that you would want a woman to be with. Think of her. Okay, like, they, they, would, they would argue. They would argue. They would say, no, Ian, we don't want nines. We don't just want, like, these virgins. We are going to be more than happy to settle with, like, <laughs> a five or a six, even a four. You know, just yeah, some nice-looking gal. Could so easily, they could so easily get a five or a four or whatever if they just went out and talked to somebody, you know? I mean, look at the biggest fucking losers out there, like drug addicts, who are dating supermodel-class women. What do they know about women that these guys don't? I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, the, the way they approach women is different. Maybe they're funny. You know, me, yeah, they might be losers, but you know what? They have confidence, don't they? And maybe that's that's all these people well, need. Well, 
Well, I, I, I would, as someone who has been binging a lot of true crime lately, you know, there, there is a, a, a what's the term? Uh, hybristophilia, I think that, that the term is, where, where w there are women who are attracted to violence in men. And there's the, the dark oh, triad yeah. personalities. That's and, um, you know, part of the frustration I think a lot of men feel, the men that we're talking about feel, is that they, they've been doing what they've been told to do. They're nice, they're friendly. And what they, what they observe in their lives is that the guys who are, who are rough, around, rough around the edges, to, to put it diplomatically, um, are the ones who are getting the women that they want. And on top of that, you know, a, a big complaint right now is that there are a lot of women who don't understand men and what they and what they want and what they need and what they desire, but who are also kind of overvalue themselves. So so it, just, just as, you, you know, you might have a, a guy who is living a sort of dead end life who is kind of a bum. You also have women who are just really not attractive and, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons who think that they deserve, you know, I was going to say Boris Kojo, but people don't know who that is. Um, or, you know, but, but, or, or Jason Momoa or, yep. or Brad Pitt or something like that. And they also are bums too. I mean, I don't mean the men, I mean the women. The women, you know, it's like, bitch, you live like this, right? They're, they're... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Max. <laughs> I love that meme. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Best. Now, yeah. I want to read some of the chat over here because I think that uh, some of the people here got pretty antsy from our conversation, including uh, one wonderful patron of ours. He really has a point to make, Maida Ronan. And by the way, speaking of patrons, if you become a patron of Break the Rules, you are going to be experiencing the same thing where when you make comments, you don't even need to pay Super Chats. You can just make a comment and I'm going to address whatever concerns you have on the screen. $20 patronage, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And if you become a $20 patron, you're going to get these beautiful magnets that my father, Alexander Polyakov, makes. He is making one right now for Maida Ronin. They are of high quality wood. They're really beautiful. Put them on the refrigerator. Put them wherever you want. Uh, and uh, if you become a $50 patron, you're going to get a custom magnet. So whatever design for a magnet you want, my father is going to make it. He is an amazing artist. And the $5 patrons get MP3s of the episodes after they come out. And they also get Discord privileges and other great things. Patreon.com slash break the rules anyway with that being said i'm gonna to go to his comments over here Maida ronan says space exploration and colonization will demand it so demand what the robo waifus so his idea is that <laughs> his his idea is that uh, hold on nina you gotta hear the man out okay so hey, the idea you pay 20 is, bucks Yes, 20 bucks, exactly. 20 bucks per month, mind you. Okay. So, yeah, so the idea, yeah, so the idea is that because we need to go to space eventually, there's not going to be um, enough resources and enough of a, um, I'll read exactly what he says. I don't want to speak uh, over him here. But the point is, is that he wants the robot waifus together with the artificial wombs, and that way humanity will be able to uh, colonize the stars. So he says over here, I think women tend towards the long house mentality and as a whole oppose things that they do not understand or that violate social norms. To be blunt, because they are difficult to have smiley face. <laughs> okay. I mean, another way to solve all this problem if we want space exploration is just to send women into space. Yeah. You don't you actually have, need you, men. Yeah, you just need turkey basters. You need turkey basters. That's it, you know. You don't even need that. Basters. There's like all kinds of options for, for women. <laughs> it's much yeah. easier. He, he also he continues to say, uh, you may have Don't a few women. Man. You may have a few women in space, but in my opinion, the robot room paradigm will simply be more pragmatic. Well, but why don't we replace men with robots too? Then yeah, the problem right, solved. I was thinking. Yeah. That's even better. Uh, well, you know what? Let's see what he replies after that. But uh, we are going to get genderless astronauts, you know, who just who well, have just, a robot yeah. womb and a robot dick, you know, <laughs> they can inseminate themselves, you know, just they, all they, the people they, that, that, yeah. that canceled Nina's uh, comic book can go into space. And, uh... <laughs> Anyone can go and enjoy space. It is a trans future. Uh, so he writes That's over here. That's transhumanism, yeah, That's, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Maida Ronan writes, we have a fun story about women in space. I don't know if he's going to write anything else after that. But anyway, getting back on track, getting back to the original point of this wonderful conversation is 
when it comes to these payment processors, banks, and uh, with Nina's example right now with Indiegogo, the concern that people have, like the concern that they uh, see in the future, is that the SJWs that some people were Did coping. We still use that term, SJWs. Yes, that, that that's fine. The SJWs I back in 2016. Term. Well, keep in mind, I'm taking a time machine back to 2016 uh, here. Take it back to 1997. Uh, maybe later, but uh, <laughs> the uh, no, that was a good time, right? Prince was, you know, anyway. I was uh, on the Jerry Springer show. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. Looking the, hot as fuck. Uh, yeah, the, 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 cope, <laughs> the cope that people were making back then was, wow, all these SJWs with the colored hair, when they get into the real world, they're going to find out what it's really like. And as we could see, that is not going that direction. It is going quite in the reverse. Right. So when it comes to banks, payment processors, like these are the real 1984 things that people are concerned about when it comes to what effect this can have and what exactly can be the strategy to start to undo this uh this situation so i'm curious what everybody thinks about that i think that we need uh, nothing's going to change without regulation we just need uh uh what do you call it uh civil rights <laughs> civil liberties we need protections for individuals i mean yeah. banks have been you know real brick and mortar banks they can't toss somebody out because of their skin color uh, you know, for all we know, Indiegogo canceled me because I'm Jewish. They can't do that. And if their if their method is opaque, if they don't have any transparency, then there's no way to know what they're doing, right? It's like mm -hmm. they, there has to be some transparency. None of this is going to change without laws changing. And that's hard for me to say, or 10 years ago, it would have been hard for me to say, because, you know, I'm yep. libertarian leaning and don't like all these laws, but you just, you need protections for individuals when these abuses are happening everywhere. You do. I mean, this is what the Civil, uh, uh, Civil Rights Act was about. I mean, it was to stop people from getting uh, uh, unpersoned over their religion, over their, you know, sex, over their race. And now it seems, you know, like politics is so divided that people are being canceled over their political views. It's, in it's insane. And there's nothing to stop it, right? There's nothing in the law that says you can't fire someone or, or you know, get rid of their banking privileges because of it. You can literally just do that if you want to. And that sucks. It needs to stop. And yeah, regulation needs to happen, unfortunately. I mean, we don't like more regulation because more regulation usually leads to more problems. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. There's no, it doesn't seem to be an easy solution to this that doesn't involve regulation. The uh, more libertarian-minded people may point out this uh, book, The Age of Entitlement, America Since the 60s, by uh, Christopher Caldwell. I don't know if you guys had a chance to read that book, but in it they talk about the civil rights, so he talks about the civil rights movement, how certain things that may have been well-intentioned, for example, the First Amendment used to have the freedom of association. Meaning that if you run a business, you can agree like who exactly can go in your business and do business with you being like a free citizen of the U.S. Now that is not the case anymore. And the question is, how much does that create a slippery slope that we are kind of in today where companies are able to have all of these, you know, regulations as far as, you know, what color of your skin? You know, it's kind of like the continuation in a way of uh, certain bad policies before in a different light where you have mm -hmm. to have a certain amount of certain people regardless of whether or not they are actually going to be qualified to be in that position and it creates i think a lot of distrust among people who are in that position you know who happen to come from those backgrounds uh by other people because i'm sure some would think like hey is this person in here because he's a diversity hire you know stuff like that which is no good either like the ideal should be having to judge people according According to, you know, like Martin Luther King says, the quality of their character. So I don't know, like uh, Clifton, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this uh, particular, and you haven't read this book yet, right? The Age of Entitlement. I, I have not. I do find it uh, uh, interesting that you mentioned diversity higher than you, you turned it over to me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as, as someone who has been a diversity hire many, many times uh, in his former career, um, you know, it's, it's very condescending and insulting. Um, you know, I think in terms of, you know, the, the original question of, you know, how do you turn the ship around, um, you know, the, people are of two minds of this. On one mind, in one mind or one on one hand, you have people who say that, uh, you know, we need 
you know, sort of like the the, the Marxist uh, long march to the institutions. We have to infiltrate and uh, and have people who think like we do, uh, you know, change from the inside. I'm of the opinion that uh, that's not going to work at this point because um, you know mm-hmm. th- these uh, these machines, these institutions are so corrupted right now. And um, I think what is interesting and exciting is that we live in a time of uh, you know, and I, and I see this more mentioned in libertarian circles, which is decentralization. This idea that because of um, particularly the rise of the internet, it sort of democratized a lot of things. So, you know, for instance, um, you know, you can have, I mean, some of them in 2016, just as an example, um, some of the most astute political commentary of that time was, you know, was delivered by this guy named, uh, called Sticks Hexenhammer, who, you know, sitting in his bathrobe in his bedroom, <laughs> yep. you know, in August 2016 saying, here, I think Trump's going to win, and here's why. Here's going to be the, bat- the battleground states. And, um, you know, here's what the strategy is. And nobody on CNN or MSNBC or in the New York Times was saying any of this stuff. And like, this is a guy who's just talking, you know, he, he's clearly a, a, a weird guy and, and, and really geeky and reads a lot. I mean, he's a total nerd, but he has an understa- a depth of understanding of our political system and polling and, and American politics that, that gives him an, a weird, unique insight. And I'm like, well, why would I go and watch Wolf Blitzer? When I can watch what this guy is doing or in terms of celebrities. Right. You know, we used to have this sort of glamorized idea of movie stars, but now we have so much access that we know that they're they're a not that interesting and be kind of dumb. Uh, but but then we have regular people like like we're doing right now, just sitting and talking about all kinds of different things. And that is way more engaging to people. So I think um, in terms of turning the ship around, it's, it's going to fall on. Um, just normal people doing their thing. I mean, one of my big beefs right now is that, uh, you know, among sort of uh, so-called right-wingers, I say, guys, you know, you got to get in the game. You, you know, you talk about economics or or policy and, uh, or excuse me, or let's just, you know, uh, I guess foreign policy or, you know, all kinds of, you know, these kinds of things, which are important. But, um, you know, you got to, you know, make songs, write, write novels, uh, write plays, produce them, make music, you know, be a part of the culture. Don't, don't just creator. complain. Right. Don't, don't just don't complain. Consumer. Like it, it can't all be Tim pool guys. You know, you, you, you have, we have to, um, you know, we, we want, we want, there's always room for like good work unless you're Nina and then you get canceled by Indiegogo. Yeah. But you know, unless but you're, I would say even unless you're a, this sort of thing happens a lot more to women than to men, like even who say the same hmm. thing. It does, and it's true. It's a yeah. complex thing, but I think that they women want, get especially, especially middle-aged women like me, we're supposed to be their mothers. We're supposed to be validating them and approving of them. And when we don't, mm. they go into narcissistic rage. So we're particularly, mm. they, they particularly enjoy canceling us. Sorry, and, I interrupted, that, please continue. That's true. Well, you know what's really frustrating about about conservatives or you know people in the heterodox center or whatever you want to call it, is that they're not creating enough. They just complain a lot. They yeah, well, complain they, well, a little about, about Netflix, <laughs> about Amazon Prime, about you know. Uh, That's Hollywood, my thing. Sorry, sorry, but, yeah, but, but it's like, but but they, you know, they, they'll say they don't pay any attention to art and culture at all. Yeah, That's so been my thing. But then they complain that oh well, look, the libs have taken it over. And, you know, no I mean, say, say what you will about Andrew Breitbart, but he had a great point back in 2009. Yep. It's like, I you know, know the quote. Right, yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't. I don't. Tell me. What's politics is Tell down me. is downstream of culture. Politics is downstream from culture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and he talked about, you know, it's a great interview. If you can find it, it's, it's at the Hoover Institution. But he talks about and I've seen this where in the industry, you know, people who are you know, big names and I've talked to some of them who are, you know, they are they have they're not even conservative they might just be independents but they're they're deathly afraid of just voicing their opinions they might have criticisms of criticisms of like you know feminism or of you know climate alarmism any number of issues which are like sort of um um key to left wing orthodoxy but they they know better than to say anything because they know they might uh, jeopardize their their work and i'm just like guys you know we're who cares you know we we're, we're artists up. and and this we we should be you know we're freely expressing ourselves and it, it, it like it makes no difference to me. Like I will never vote for a socialist or a communist. But I have. But that 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 point of view. If you are one of those, like it has no bearing. Like, can you match my harmonies with me? Can we build? Can we build a scene together? What's your ability to 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 you know? Can you hold a stage? Can you hold a screen? You know, are are you great to work with? These are the things that I care about. I don't care about your personal opinions. And if you have personal opinions, that that's that's fine. They can inform your work, but just don't let it. Just don't let it 
um, override the, your 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 craft. So that's sort of that's sort of my my rant is that yeah, but, guys, you you, can, you complain all the time, but then you 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 turn around and you say, well, look look at how the left has taken over all these institutions. It's like, well, guys, you know, you, you gotta come come in the arena and and we'll we'll embrace what you do. I mean, people, I you know, I, I posted videos. I posted a video recently of me of me singing, and people, you know, the best comments I got were people who were like, yeah, I have no interest in musical theater or in or in um you know in theater in general, but. I will watch more of what you do because you're really, really good. And I'm like, guys, there's such a big, big um, uh, yep. market out there for people who are dying for just great work, and just do that and reach to, and reach people. And That's you don't have to just part, appeal to right? a bunch of like it, assholes in New York and LA. I'm doing it, work, and it's just it's getting and yeah, really you got canceled. Yeah, like over and over again. It's but so there, but there is also another tiring. difficult part here that I don't think we're giving enough mm. credit to, which is the algorithm. For example, with break the rules, what I'm doing right now, which has been working out, is I've been making short clips, and I pay attention. What is the trending topic of the day? I look through my entire streams and match the keywords with a uh, vocal recognition. You know, like I transcribe all the sounds into uh, text, and I find the exact thing and from a stream that could have been done like two years ago, and I put that out there. And the reason why that works is because people pay attention to certain topics and they grab onto them, that's how they're able to grow. That's how this whole system works. The problem is that when you want to do original work, the only way you could possibly do it is if you fizz first build up some kind of a reputation of making a lot of content that people like so you have an audience in the first yeah, place. Sadly. The only way to get the audience in the first place, unfortunately, is to pick all these different keywords, all of these things that are trending. And just, I mean, Ian, you know better than anybody yeah, in the I, entire I, world. And I hate doing it. I hate doing it, but I do it. Just part of the gig. Yeah. So, so how do we how do we get to what Clifton's talking about here? Because I want to do it too. But like, what's the what's the step? How do we cross that bridge? I think you just got to keep doing it. That's the thing, right? You got to keep doing it and building that audience. So while you're doing this uh, algorithmic gaming, is what I would call it, build a you know do something that that is your own thing, like creative, and and keep doing that, and eventually people who come to you through the algorithm will recognize that you have original work and they'll stay there. And these are the people you want to keep. So it, the growth is slow, but it will happen, right? I mean, nothing happens without any sort of pain. And, and you know, on top of that, one of the most exciting things to me about YouTube, as j just for instance, I mean, you know, I, I've gone down rabbit holes. You know, there's a guy who, and, and I use this example uh, frequently, but I mean, there's a guy who trains, what is it? I think it's Minx and dogs to catch rats and that's his whole thing he's so passionate about catching rats about ratting with dogs and <laughs> minks his videos have tens of millions of views there's another guy who you know it's like this old kind of cowboy guy who has a bunch of you know sort of recipes or whatever and his his videos get millions of views there's, there's a woman i love um what's the guy name uh, what's her name the girl with the dogs Oh, you know her videos. Oh, yeah, she are watches just, dogs. Yeah, I love, I love her videos. They're, yeah, they're like, they're here's, you know, here's information about the breed. Here's me, you know, in the process of grooming, and they're like these short videos of Doesn't her just grooming happen. dogs and selling yeah. her products as she does it, and it's, it's genius, okay. and it's, it's, it's so engrossing, and and it, 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 to me, it goes back to this idea of like, you know, the ordinary person is extraordinary when they are in their niche, and mm -hmm. that's that's kind of what it is. Uh, what it's about for me. So yes, the algorithm sucks. And you know, I, I hate the sort of outrage culture bullshit. And I, I don't like it uh, m myself. Um, I try to avoid it. But at the same time, I, I think you're, you're, you're right, Ian, is that you know, you, you do your thing. And, and people you will find your find your it. people, your, you yeah, will I find mean, like, your, I your tribe. Tyler to you. He, all he does is review crap on Amazon. And he does it in the stupidest way possible. Like he'll, he'll literally take, you know, six weeks to do one video, but he has like multiple videos in the works while he's doing the one thing, right? So he will test out what it's like to dip McDonald's burgers in 10 different kinds of soft drinks over a period of four weeks to see what's the result, you know? And it's, it's, it's so stupid. It's such a dumb channel, but I watch it. It's like, it's kind of like engrossing in a way, you know, it's like 30 minutes per video. So I can just sit there and I watch it if I want to chill. And there's another guy I watch, uh, Wristwatch Revival. All he does is he's got this soothing voice and he repairs old watches, you know, and he talks about the process of, of how they came together, how, you know, what, what each part in the device is, and it's just beautifully filmed. And that's his whole channel, literally just repairing watches. And it's like, okay. 
That's cool. I can give an example as well. There's this guy who does this project called Hampshire, where he creates an underwater city for his hamsters to live in. <laughs> <laughs> and this was actually something that was picked up by Mr. Metacore Jim, who you, Clifton, you were you were speaking with him. So that's uh that that's a nice get right there. Like he's a real part of internet culture. And well, it is. It's funny, you know. He's a big part of, and and Ian. That's where I became aware of you. Was the whole GamerGate fiasco? Uh -huh. Um, you know, it's it's so. I mean, if, even that thing, which was, you know, it's sort of a digression, but that you know, in terms of uh, culture wars, for me, that was sort of a a, a spark mm -hmm. that lit. Uh, uh, that that became sort of this burning ember. You're like, oh, you know, what what could be more innocuous and benign than gaming and video games? And yet, it became right. this this big, huge thing. But maybe you know, it's it's a demonstration of. Just how you know the, the the power of the internet, where this what what, what began as basically a sex scandal, uh, bubbled mm -hmm. up to bubbled to up to, to it, the, censor there, it. There, yeah. there is a there is there is a Law and Order SVU episode that was <laughs> yes, based, that Logan was based Paul. on this. Logan Paul is in that episode. He is the villain. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, go home, gamer girl. Yeah, yeah it's totally that's totally right. him. You yeah. know. So you know, so these things do have do have a they do have an impact, and uh, you know, I I like to think that. Now that we have these tools available, that we can work outside of these machines now, um, that that uh, you know, I mean, and and again, we see evidence over and over again. These these big Hollywood movies are like they're making less and less money, unless you're Tom Cruise. Um, people aren't watching a uh, they they aren't watching award shows, um, you know. But they're they're looking at you know what podcasters and TikTokers and and quote unquote influencers are doing, and it's like you, you know yeah you know the Rock has a bunch of followers on Instagram, but it's like we're there too. And um, and we're competing for the same kind of space. And I, I think what's really interesting now is there's sort of an equalizing effect in a way where people can. Um, I mean, I joke all the time, you, you know, you can be a, an Alabama six. And uh, sorry, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to objectify women just just for a second. But uh, but, you know, you can be an Alabama six and just and put on some some leggings and film yourself doing squats and get as many followers over time as Michael B. Jordan. It's a really weird sort of um, sort of thing that's happening right now. And well, I, some I, some can. I mean, there's a big element of luck. There's all well, the you, people whose videos you're you not work seeing. At it. But it's not just, you can also work at it and not luck out, right? Like no one really understands virality. That's yeah, that's life. life. Yeah, that's life, life. life yeah. right? Like you it's, can try, but, but it's not like, oh, if you do this, you're going to get that. There's you you know, to be hundred, to hundreds of people. You have to what? You have to be able to know how to network as well. You know, you can't just be putting videos out there into the void because, mm. you know, you're not going to yeah. get anyone. And, yeah. and all kinds of other factors. This has always been the case with art. You know, there is so yeah. much good art there. There's so much talent out there that we're just never going to hear about because... Unless you come on Break the Rules, because Break yeah. the Rules is bringing all the different people together. Clifton, I have you were two mentioning... channels. Visit mine. You they know. make yeah. careers. Break break the rules. <laughs> yes, exactly. Retroactively. Like, Clifton, did you know that, that I had a Sticks Hexes Hammer 666 on about, like, I think 17 times now or something like that? Like, he's like a regular guest. Really? Well, get him in I want to get him on. Get him in touch with me. I would love I, to get I, him I in touch to with get you. Him on. <laughs> but, he's a, I want to show you my lenticular cards. But he's very, he's very interesting. I mean, you know, it, he's just he's such a, a unique kind of weird guy. I think he would say he's a weird guy. Mm -hmm. But he would even but, say it. But but, it. Yeah. but his but but his comment. There, there's something about his commentary and his in his views which I find so uh, so fascinating and and so much more illuminating than, than what I normally find. I mean, I like to go to like to real to to uh, to real clear politics and look at you know the different editorials. Um, from around the country and it's it's always uh fun to see what people are talking about but then you see sticks and he's just like, <laughs> he just kind of like cuts right through yeah just sitting like, in his bathrobe or hawaiian shirt in his with bathrobe, the cats. stroking yeah. his cats yeah <laughs> yeah no sticks is one of a kind but there is something that i want to return to though because i'm not sure if um it was quite understood what i was talking about before with the uh that that book um uh, and the civil rights stuff. So the situation there, we were talking about how we should have a decentralized uh, future. With decentralization also comes in this aspect of uh, judging people according to their character, hopefully. But at the same time, there may be some people who would say, well, we don't want any of this type to be within our whatever the hell it's going to be. And that is another future versus the one where everything is kind of like, on the grid, very much controlled. If you say the wrong pronoun, they're going to fine you a couple of uh, social credit system points. So those could be two potentially different futures. You know, maybe oh, there's God. a third yes, one as well. Gee. That's what yes, exactly. I mean, it, social credit is is being baked into ESG, and they are going uh. to 
yeah. use what is you know currently what we call wokeness as a as a as like they'd actually quantify it that's scary it is scary you know, th- like yeah. all of us here we're done you know if that becomes the future we're fucking done this is why it's so pivotal for us to keep fighting right now and, and just be as loud as fucking possible because like right now if we think things are bad well they're gonna get worse if we don't fight but on the other side though let's say for example we were to accomplish this more decentralized model what do you guys think and like clifton for example like we were talking about diversity hiring all that kind of stuff if we were to talk about let's say back in the day depending on where you were it would be difficult if you were like a certain color of skin or if you were jewish like nina and myself for example to be able to be hired in certain things and the question is is there a balance that could be struck here or is it kind of like every group for themselves at a certain point where if you you know, if you want to be in a certain group, it's going to depend on them whether they want you in or not. And is that also something that should be uh, or even could be fought against if we're going to central? I want to answer this. Answer, Nita. All right. So I'm older than any of you, and I come from the age of broadcast media where there was all media was gate kept, and then the internet came and opened doors that were never opened before and made it possible for individuals like me to make a feature film, for example, and even distribute it. And then uh, mob culture happened and has effectively destroyed that. I don't cry very often, but I was crying this afternoon about how much I miss free speech and how disappointing this has all been. In 2008, it was like, you know, game changer, decentralization, it's the answer. And, uh, I could not have predicted what happened. I could not have predicted this mob behavior and like peer to peer censorship. Really. It was peer to peer distribution in 2008 and now it's peer to peer censorship. And, uh, this just, there's no way I would have predicted it. And it's heartbreaking. It is. No. Yeah. You know, I, it's a difficult question to answer, and you know, as cynical as I as I tend to be, um, I mean, I'm you know, I'm I'm in Atlanta right now, and what I find fascinating about the city is that there's a huge, huge mix of people. You've got you know, you've got ghetto culture, which you know, no one likes, but uh, you know, you got the you know, the blue collar sort of salt of the earth working class. Uh, you got entrepreneurs, professionals. Um, I mean, you know, and then you have celebrities like Sha- like like Shaquille O'Neal, you know what I mean, who who just kind of pop by, and um, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like, and this is again, I, I feel like um, people want to go along to get along and they kind of want to be left alone. And um, there is there is an inherent tribalism, uh, you know, a, a, about us, which maybe we can sort of overcome with education and civilization um, in, in a sense. Um, but at the same time, you know, I go back to this idea that we're all kind of here together and we all have to work together in some way because otherwise what's, you know, what is the, what's the alternative, um, hyper-regulation or, you know, or, or anarchy. And, um, in terms of a decentralized kind of world, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm naive, but I, I do, I do think, you know, just based on the, the niches that I follow that, that, uh, you know, people will, people will gravitate toward, you know, talent, authenticity, goodness, all these kinds of things. Um, you know, I, I think of, what was I reading recently? I think it might've been Aristotle's, um, might've been rhetoric. And uh, just, you know, he had this idea of like, people tend to gravitate naturally towards what is good and what is true. And, um, I, you know, again, as cynical as I am, I like to think that maybe that 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 is, um, that is accurate. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, it's, 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 a, it's a tough question to answer, but I, I do, my feeling right now, and this is my my bias because I'm sort of you know I've been chucked out by by the machine for 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 you know well, one particular reason, um, but um, my my hope is that people are sensible can be sensible enough um, to to embrace what is to embrace what is what is good and what is great and what is and what is true and uh, and you know I, I see that they're, they're rejecting I mean even Broadway now they can't keep their shows open the Phantom of the Opera one of the longest running shows on Broadway has just closed um, you know they, they're you have these um, 
revivals, these sort of woke shows that are also closing to the point where you, you have the critics now. Even critics are saying, look, this revival of 1776, you know, this is a, a decent musical, but no one wants to see this gender, this gender swapped, um, you know, race bent, <laughs> yep. you know, musical. It's just no one In wants London, to see that anymore. It's the same thing there, right? I mean, they, they, they did Joan of Arc with a, a genderqueer person oh, and they made God. a whole thing about gender. It was so, like, so, so they, they posted, it was the, the Globe Theater, they posted online and I felt, and here's the thing, what, what you know, I, I feel bad. This, this is the bleeding heart in me, right? I, w- I want people to succeed and do well. But when I saw, you know, they, they posted the, like, the opening monologue from, from, that, from that production, and there's this, you know, this act, actor, which is, you know, of indiscriminate uh, uh, gender, it looks like biologically female. And they're talking about this thing, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm glad that you're working and I'm glad you get a chance to express yourself and you're on, you know, you're in Shakespeare's Globe. That's an amazing um, opportunity, you know, in a lot of ways, but no one gives a shit and nobody <laughs> wants to watch this. Or like, you know, the, yeah. the, the romantic comedy Bros, you know, that, that came out. And it, <laughs> yeah, it failed, or the new Witcher, it right? So uh, the new and, and Witcher it, spinoff where they talked about being genderqueer. It's like, no one's watching the show for this. And, and, I, and, I, and I hate that because... If I'm somebody who is a sexual minority, for instance, you know, what 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 kind of impact will that kind of failure have on me? And, and will that yeah. mm. and, and will that communicate to me? Is that going to confirm my biases of, of how hostile the world is toward who I am? And uh, so, I mean, I don't it, it's 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 a really tough, tough thing to 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 navigate right now. I mean, it I'm not really answering like your question, Lance, but. You know, you know, billions as like a genderqueer character, but oh yeah, it's uh, Asia. I worked with her like a long time ago. Yeah, but you know? but like they're yeah. they're you know like they don't make a big deal out of it. You know, like they they really they're don't there. make a big deal. Out of it. Yeah, they're just there. They <laughs> they're work there. And, yeah, yeah, they're, they're like you know, they're as cutthroat as as Axel is, and it's like okay, cool. Cool. There was like a uh, there was a similar thing with Twin Peaks where David Duchovny's character, you know, he uh, wore a wig yep. and you know he was like a woman, and they didn't focus on that at all. It was just like this thing, and it was on the side. It's just there, yeah, it's just yep. there. And I think that's the way that it should be when it comes to the differences that people have that don't intrude on other people's lives. Where, for example, if we have cultures that end up clashing together where it's totally different you know some people may come from a completely different life might, might as well come from the planet mars and then other people meet them of course they're not going to have that much in common at all but if people are raised in the same i'm not going to say culture i'm going to say civilization because i think civilization transcends culture then there are going to be certain ways of let's say being civil that can be recognized regardless of who you are and at that point it's like all the 4chan people who want to create an ethnostate or whatever <laughs> in a way they end up getting the end result without getting what they want should we focus on civilization because what they end up getting is if we judge people according to you know a very high level of what they bring to the table then that's that then they have their safe streets then they have a high trust society and i think everybody wants that at the end of the day so yeah, meritocracy yeah why is it so difficult though to have that as opposed to one side saying, well, we want to kick all of these people out and just leave this. Mm. And the other side saying, you know, bring in the entirety of the third world and we're all going to take care of them because we're so loving. You know, like, they're, why is it so difficult to strike this balance? Exactly. I mean, be, be more like Singapore, you know, except on equality. Yeah, well, Singapore is interesting in that they bring in migrants, but they're not citizens. Like, they bring them They're not allowed work. to stay there for more than four years. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I guess that's people would say, wait, isn't that brain drain? Because, you know, couldn't you use? But then again, Singapore has fewer people uh, who do that kind of uh, work, I guess, uh, as far as natives it, go. It, it also depends on, on yeah, like, I mean, these migrant workers are, are, are you would say, unskilled workers, right? Uh, if it's a uh, high skilled tasks, like, you know, working in IT or doing something in the arts, then, yeah, you can you can become a permanent resident. No problem. Like I can be. I was offered it. You know, yeah. all I had to do was stay there for two years and they're like, yeah, here's a PR thing that you just apply for. But that's me. Right. I mean, but if you are if if your only con- ability to contribute to the society there is to work as a you know manual laborer, then they they're like, well, we want to give other people a chance to work here as well. So sorry, you have to go home and reapply. Yeah. I wonder if a similar model could work in the United States in terms of, uh, I don't know, the uh, migration uh, here. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, who yeah, knows? It, it works. I mean, it, it it's it's like it it works out for both parties, right? Because it, first of all, you know, it gives these people a better chance of, of living a better quality standard of living to get good pay. And on the other hand, it doesn't deprive the local community of of resources. You, know, you don't have to pay for these guys. I mean, you just pay them as they work, and that's it. You pay them a, a fair salary, and, and then they do their jobs and they go home. They're, you can't they're... you can't compare the U.S. with Singapore. They are so Unfortunately. different. Singapore is so Singapore tiny. Island. Yeah, yeah. It's a... you can't even do that in Malaysia. We want yeah. to do something like that here, but it's like we can't control the migration because the borders are too. Porous, right? Yeah, this I mean, the same, it's stuff that works in Singapore would not work in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing in Singapore is that for a long time they have had a uh, benevolent dictator, but now that he's not around anymore, Lee Kuan Yew. Yeah, Lee Brilliant Kuan Yew. Man. But since he's not there anymore, the question is. Can the model function without there being this guy who's uh, behind the scenes, like making sure everything is tip top magoo? Yeah, right. I think they're trying. They're trying. You know. Yeah, and again, like I am the furthest uh, fan from any kind of dictatorship because I see there being a lot of problems with, you know, there being a situation when you get a lot of ass kissers telling you how wonderful you are, and at that point you end up buying your own bullshit and becoming, you know, a, sh a shell of your former self, kind of like a Mussolini type of deal. But anyway, yep. as far as what happens now, though, regardless of what we want or what we don't want, I have a last question for all of you guys, which is, do you believe in that saying from 4chan that a uh, hard man uh, it start yeah hard men make good times uh, tough men make good strong men sorry strong men <laughs> make good times good times make weak men weak men make hard times hard times make strong men do you agree or disagree well, first of all, um, I'm offended that, that you misgendered Nina by calling her, uh, her guy. Um, <laughs> don't see allies are the worst. You don't have to do that. <laughs> allies ruin everything. Oh, you know, I was going to say, you know, as, as a and I hate beginning sentences this way, but as a black person, I'm like, I don't need any allies. You know what I mean? Like, just just no, you were out. being my ally is what I'm saying. You I know. Were, I know. You were, yeah, I know. No, I, no, I, I hear you. I don't hear you. patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would never do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I think that quote, and I, I believe you know there was a novelist. It, it, it comes from a novel uh, that that uh, that was written. Um, I think there is truth in that. In that you reach a level of comfort and privilege that um, you know you you lose a bit of edge. And I mean, I know I've experienced this in my own life, where you know you, you reach a point of sort of contentment and complacency, and you you kind of don't have the same kind of fire that that you that you needed when you were hungry and you were you know desperate and broken you were coming up and um i think on a societal scale when, when you we're, we're sort of in some ways almost victims of our success as as a society where you know we we have all we, we live in the lap of luxury relative to everywhere else in the world and you know we have this great technology and you know we we can go to the grocery store and and find you know all kinds of food and we don't have to hunt um, you know, if, if we're doing okay, you know, we have, you know, heating, air conditioning, climate controlled environments, we have, you know, vehicles, um, bicycles, skateboards, who knows, you know, but, you know, what kind of individual does that produce? And, um, you know, it's not going to be the, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's no room where, you know, under extraordinary circumstances, people can't rise to the occasion. But I think in the general sense, you know, there is some truth to that, to that statement and that, once you reach a point where you're kind of cool, you're chill, you're all right, the the animal in you um, kind of dies because it's just not necessary. You can become so, complacent. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that, that's sort of my, my two cents about it. And uh, Nina, Ian? I'll go first because I have to pop out, actually. Uh oh, <laughs> wait. And before you pop out, make sure that you promote the hell out of whatever you would like to okay. promote. Yes. Uh, so I'll, first, I'll, I'll talk about uh, you know what you asked uh, about <clears throat> strong men creating uh, good times, good times create weak men, et cetera, et cetera. I would say, yeah. I mean, look at our forefathers. I mean, they had to deal a lot of crap, you know, especially those who were living through World War II and the Depression before that. I mean, they had to really, really struggle. And now, because they knew the meaning of struggle, they wanted their kids to have a better life. So they didn't, you know, I mean, they raised their kids to uh, to have easier lives, right? For the most part, that's where the you know the boomers come in. They had a pretty good time of it, and then you know, I would argue, uh, the boomers are still pretty tough, you know, but their kids are even weaker, right? Because 
just things got softer and softer. Society just became more and more lax. I mean, we we stopped worrying about the world around us. I mean, our biggest problems are what? Like uh, gas costs too much, slightly too much or something, right? I mean, but for the most part, people are still enjoying their lives. I mean, look at today, for all the complaining that people do, they're still living pretty good lives, right? That nothing. It's nothing compared to what life was like in the 1940s for a lot of people. So they are producing weaker people now. And, and that, that is unfortunate because there will come a time when we either run out of resources or, you know, we face a challenge that is, you know, maybe a societal challenge that is insurmountable. That's, that's something that someone like our fathers or forefathers would, you know, would be able to say, hey, here's a simple solution. Let's deal with it this way. And they would have just put their foot down and done it. But now everybody's so soft, like, you know, the mass migration crisis in Europe, for instance, you know, People in the 1940s would have just said, hey, let's just deport these people. You know, these, they're, they're troublemakers, deport them. Maybe not all of them, but like if they commit a crime, they're gone. Simple rule. But now it's like, oh, you can't even do that. You know, the people are committing crimes. Like, like I read a story about a, a man who committed a rape so that he could stay in the country, like in, 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 you know, in, in, the, in Sweden or something. He committed a rape just so he could stay in a prison, right? Disgusting. And he bragged about it, and 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 the judge sentenced him to prison. They did just deport him. He was about to be deported, and he did that, and 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 he's out in about you know in nine months. So what happens then when he's out? Is he going to do it again? What's going to happen? You know, it, it's just society like you know uh, Sweden fifty years ago would not have dealt with this. They would have just like sent the guy home, packing, you know, gone. But now it's like they're so soft, they're so weak, and. This has resulted in in society that's just falling apart because I mean we've we've seen what happens in cities where police are afraid to enforce the laws because they're not allowed to, and 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 people in general just sort of like act like bystanders when bad things happen. People get beat up in public and they just watch. They t- they take out their cameras and they film it. And they cheer it on. They don't care, and and that's the society that we live in. It's weak as hell. What happened to you know societal cohesion? Well, it's gone. You know, it's not there anymore, and that's. That's sad because, like, this is what's happening to Western democracy. This is what hap- is happening to the Western world, and there's just no sense of, of like, that you belong to something greater. You know, everybody's narcissistic. Everybody's just in it for themselves. They're e- either in it for the clout, for the page views, for the, you know, the, the watch time, whatever it is. They're, they're getting out of it if if that's their narcissistic goal. If not, you know, it's like they're just it's just every man for himself. And 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 what kind of society is that? So you pay your taxes, but then you expect to get ripped off by the government. You don't expect the government to even serve you. Like you, you pay your taxes, you complain about it, but you're not happy with the results. I mean, what the hell is that? That's that is taxation without representation, and that's what everybody's going through right now. They're paying their taxes and they're not being represented. Is that fair? I mean, if it was 1776, people would be doing something about it. It's a good point, and Ian. Before uh, before you go, because uh, you mentioned that you have to go right now, I want to make sure yep. that you promote whatever it is that you'd like. So uh, go for it. <laughs> Uh, well, check me out on uh, YouTube. I'm at youtube.com slash catch up, catch up. That's one. And the other one's catch up gaming. So uh, two channels. Yeah. What kind of games you play? Um, all kinds, you know, mostly PC games, mostly PC games. So I cover that stuff. I uh, cover, you know, some culture war things in video games. I think that's a that's a big scene that not a lot of people talk about right now. So you know, I'm trying to get into that as well. So I produce a lot of shorts. So prepare to be bombarded but you know you can always mute the shorts <laughs> uh, otherwise i have long videos as well yep excellent and uh talk to uh, tucker for me okay okay uh, yeah yes Michelle. yeah so so ian thank you so much i just want to say uh, first time appearance i really enjoyed having you brother i would uh, love to have you on again absolutely i'd love to be on just ping me yeah you know where excellent. to reach me all right excellent so we're oh, gonna will go you to... will you come on to the heterodorks podcast mm. yeah ian? sure yeah, Corinna, happily. Really, okay, great. Yeah, uh, you, I'll get your email from Lev. Excellent. All right, this is cool. this is what break the rules does. Break the rules links people together like like a uh, Spotum Gotum and Pooh Shiesty. For those who remember that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I I don't want you on my show, Ian. So there's I'm, oh. I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'll come on your show, Stand Clifton. Down. You want I'll me out? No, anyway. Yeah. Um. Do you want me to respond yes, to this? Yes, yes. Well, before you respond, I just want to issue a quick response of my own, which is I am grateful in the way that I was born in the USSR, back when it was still the USSR, like 1988, because the experiences that my parents have, it did something to me where I really do appreciate what it is that's around me right now, because I actually have a link 
to what was literal hell on earth for most people. Even though I personally did not really get to experience that hell on earth, there is more than enough information for me to confirm that hell exists. And that's why, I don't know, maybe people should put on some VR headset when they're like five years old and just have them experience something really, really bad and then take it off and, you know, like they're physically okay, but just something to give them a little bit of a spook, you know, some like a uh, scared like the, straight. Like the McCarthy era affected my family? Maybe, yeah. Like, I don't know, like... Okay, I really gotta some... go. All okay. right, Ian. All right. Thank you so Bye. much, brother. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya, man. Bye. See ya. See ya. I'm going to have to insert another thing on the screen over here to uh, make it. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Now it works. So, uh, yeah, like I am very, very grateful for having that insight that these kind of things exist. Like my grandma, you know, luckily, you know, she's still, you know, she's still w with us. And she was born in 1941 on a boat that was heading out of Russia or out of, uh, I think it was, yeah, out of St. Petersburg because the Nazis were invading so this was still something that's going on, you know, today. Like, these people are still around, you know. they're, And to think that so many people don't even know who Hitler is or don't even know anything. Like, I consider 4chan to be, like, the pinnacle of enlightenment in comparison to what's probably, like, 90% of the U.S. population. That's grim. Say that one more time. Excuse me. I consider 4chan to be the pinnacle of enlightenment in comparison to probably 90% of the population. <laughs> that Holy is shit. grim. That's the darkest <laughs> thing anybody said <laughs> on this thing. So I wanted to say that, that 4chan, yes. if, if I'd never heard it attributed to 4chan, but sure. I mean, the biggest problems that I'm facing are being canceled. Like my freedom of speech, this very important principle has has been culturally eliminated by made up problems and made up identities. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know people cherish their identities very much, but like, uh, they're not real, right? Like people come in two sexes with a little bit of disorders of sexual development. And yet entire industries are based on people feeling some discomfort with the sex they were born in, which I can relate to because I certainly was gender dysphoric myself. And the, um, the encouragement of suicidal uh, ideation and threats, the, it's like the opposite of what you're supposed to do with suicidal tendencies. You're not supposed to encourage them. You're not supposed to say like, do this thing or this person's gonna kill themselves. You're never supposed to do that. That's actually a form of abuse, suicide threats. Um, but these are all, they're so first world. They're, so, they're such luxury problems. They're, and they're, they're causing like the downfall of my most cherished principle in the US, which is freedom of expression. So yeah, it's very soft, it's, it's pathetic. It's like, uh, what would you call it? Uh, it's nar narcissarchy. The uh, Kabbalists believe that there is a heightening, there is a raising of one's ego that's going on today. And the idea is to try and transmute that force because ego is something that is required. Like you need a good sense of ego not to just be part of the herd. But then when you have a lot of that ego, you only start doing things to benefit yourself or to benefit yourself at the moment. So you're not going to help out that person because why should I? Why would that benefit me in any way? Or I'm only going to help out that person if it means that I get recognition for it, if it means that I'm going to get certain accolades. So I don't know. We're going to have to work that out. And by the way, the quote that I was thinking of with the whole stupid uh, thing was a George Carlin quote. Uh, think of how stupid the average person is. <laughs> And realize that half of them are stupider than stupider that. Stupider than that, yeah. Yep. Well, so, he also said yeah. that uh, that political correctness is fascism pretending to be manners, which I thought was very, very prescient. Absolutely. Prescient, that's that's a good word. I got to remember that word for later. Yeah, I, you know, prescient. I read sometimes. I, I know, I know some, <laughs> I, I have a vocabulary. No, but, but, wow, I'm impressed. No, but... You're so articulate. 
you, you I were could, not, no, oh, oh, sorry, Lev. I, I, I got to say this. Yes. Because, you know, just to respond to Nina. <laughs> because I, I said this, I said, I said, you, you guys, you have to understand that, that in our current paradigm, in this current era, um, calling, calling a, a, <laughs> oh shit, how am I going to get, how am I, what did I say? Calling a black person uh, uh, dumb is, uh, Oh, gosh, what is it? It's, it's it it is it's racist, but calling a black person smart is anti racist. <laughs> it's like wait, I thought it was I thought it was condescending and diminishing. Like I thought it is. I, thought that, I that, was that's, trying that's to be racist, Clifton. Well, that was yeah, I, I butchered I butchered my own joke in my own quote, but but that's but that's sort of the idea. Okay. You know, it's 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 calling calling a black person uh, intelligent means that you're a racist, but uh, but calling them that you know uh, dumb or whatever is also racist. It's like it's a weird thing. I got to go back and you know dig up whatever I whatever I, I said, but it was actually brilliant at the time but, but the, it's, so, but the it's weird, so hilarious but the weird thing for me is when i see a lot of let's say whether we're talking about in hip-hop and there are a lot of great things in hip-hop too but when there there seems to be certain affection towards things just because they're like for more of like this ghetto thug environment and those are the things that a lot of let's say white people tend to kind of honor in a way way more so than and again even though there's good hip-hop way more so than broadway for example or whatever i don't know like uh way more so than the great american songbook and apparently, that's the thing you, you know yeah apparently Go white on. liberals have been studied dumbing down their language to talk to black people yeah yeah they're they're extraordinarily condescending and they're some of the most annoying fucking people and um it's like again it goes back to this idea of allies you know uh, you know and i'm somebody who i mean i was born in germany and i've spent a lot of my formative years in western europe you know my some of my best friends so you're were, a you nazi know, well well in, in training <laughs> You know, we, I've been going to all the online meetings and, uh, you know, with my video off, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm sort of uh, trepidatious about going in public, <laughs> going in all person. Right. All right. <laughs> By the way, German. another 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 great word, trepidatious. I'm learning all these SAT oh, words oh, today. Oh, tre trepidatious. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, there, there's somebody in the chat was like, we get it. We did. We get it, Duncan. You have a dictionary. Sprechst du Deutsch? Sprechst du Deutsch? Nine, nine. Kind of uh, okay. I, 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 I hate that I, I answer that question in, in that way. But, you know, I mean, I, I mean, but some of my, but my friends when I was a kid were like, you know, uh, Greek, Turkish, Flemish, you know, Dutch, French, all kinds of people. And um, I don't know, man, I just I don't I don't need people to condescend to me to make to make them sell because it's about making themselves feel better that, that feel better that that's the big thing about it i mean when all the george floyd stuff um erupted i would get these messages from aggrieved white women who i'd worked with previously who would just be like i'm so sorry of for everything you're going through and i know things must be terrible right now and i'm so <laughs> sorry that you're you're struggling so much and i'm thinking to myself wait a minute are you saying that your life is better than mine because you're white. That's basically what, what, what they were saying to me right now. And, um, or at the, at the time. And I'm thinking to myself, like, just, I'm like, I'm cool. I'm, I'm really, I'm really okay. I'm really all right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's annoying, bro. It's so annoying. Did you read the age of white guilt and the disappearance of the black individual by Shelby Steele? No, but uh, I do know who Shelby Steele is, but I'm going to I keep this getting this essay is so good. I actually even I put a copy on my blog because it's one of my favorite essays. What is it and called? The Age of The Age of White Guilt. It was an essay from like 2000 or 2001, something like that. Um, it was so prescient. Uh, it explains so much. And um, white guilt is a thing. White guilt makes us crazy. And I, I feel it. I've been, I've been conscientiously working on it because it makes, well, guilt, guilt makes people do some really stupid things. And, uh, uh, so this is a conversation in and of itself, but that yeah. as it just, I feel like, like one of the, one of the things with the rise of trans activism is it became acceptable for white people to discharge white guilt through trans activism and even, even BLM was sort of, you know, BLM has like trans women of color at the center. Like there's, there's been this association of, trans identities with blackness 
And certainly if you call out uh, trans bullshit, people immediately accuse you of being a racist and a white supremacist. Uh, well, but it, the- it, it's the guilt. It's the guilt that like makes pe- they, people lose their minds. We're so manipulable. Well, but it's also, well, first of all, I mean, BLM, I mean, I went to their website back in uh, 2014. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people who supported the movement were were of the idea or of the, of the perception that it was about police brutality. But then I went to the website and it was a bunch of intersectional sort of gobbledygook jargon with very scant mention of police, of, of police. And I said, to, you know, I said, these people are just there. They they don't care really about what black people really care about. So right, right then I was like, nah, you know, not, uh, that, that's, that's not for me. But in terms of the, the guilt, it goes back to this idea of why people are so condescending and they, they, they dumb themselves down. They do, they do kind of stupid stuff. Like, um, I was thinking that earlier today, as a matter of fact, I was, I was rehearsing for a concert and people were talking about appointing a black person to some position at some, you know, arts institution. And they were, they were so self-satisfied and they were like, it's time <laughs> or, or the show um, or, or, or the show waitress on, on Broadway. You know, they, they called me in for a, a replacement for their romantic lead. And uh, it, it wasn't about, you know, does he have his, his 20 years of experience or, you know, the, you know, his com- combination of charisma or intellect and charm, you know, his sing- the quality of his singing voice or whatever, what he can bring to the role. It was like, it's time to give it to a black guy. We should we should have a black guy in this role. I'm like fuck y'all. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I I almost I envy that um, that previous generations. I mean, you know, the the CCH Pounders, the Alfre Woodards, the the James Earl Joneses, Denzel Washingtons, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Lawrence Fishburns. You know, they had to be extraordinary, and you know, in, in a way to to stand out. And, and Wesley Snipes, you know, Blade. Wesley, Nobody Wesley was complaining Snipes, about Blade, by the way. Like Wesley, that was. Look, Wesley Snipes was one of the biggest action stars in the 90s. Whoopi Goldberg was a huge star in the 80s and 90s. And but they have to erase that and and pretend that never happened in order to preserve this sort of narrative that, um, you know, that that we're super oppressed and and that people are holding us back. And it's so it's it's so offensive because I'm like, dude, I stand on the shoulders of guys like, you know, Robeson. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Sidney Poitier, uh, you know uh, Harry Belafonte, who I met. I thanked him when I met him. I embraced him. I said thank you for 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 blazing the trail for guys like me. And when people stand up and say, you know, we're still oppressed, as if we're still in the 1950s, I'm like, you're 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 negating all the work and all the struggles and sacrifices of the of all the people that came before you. You know, it, it's just it's so fucking annoying to me. So that that's a whole rant that has nothing to do with what, what no, we're talking about. No, but now in a way, you are annoying. oppressed, but you are oppressed by this new hive mind structure that wants you to act in a very particular way and have specific opinions. That's the new trap right now. And that's that the, is why the subtitle of the Age of White Guilt is the disappearance of the black individual. It's a great essay. Well, in in terms of black, and you know, there's um, and I want to have her on my podcast actually eventually is a Kimberly Crenshaw, ah, um, you know, yeah. one of the sort of I guess progenitors of uh, critical race theory, and um, and, and she intersectionality. Wrote this... She coined right, that. right. Well, that essay that she wrote, I forgot what, what the name of it is, but it's like 1991 or something, and I, and I found it very interesting, and I want to talk to her about it. You know, not not in an, a, an attacking kind of outrage culture sort of way, but just to pick her brain. But there is a, mm-hmm. a part of that essay where she wrote about this idea that you are you are a person who happens to be black which is you know how i feel about things and, and i'm a very sort of individualistic kind of person but but to but to the, the the critical race theorists or to quote unquote progressives to like sort of leftists um which i which i view as distinct from from liberals um that is anathema um you have to be part of this collective and you know if you're not i mean i ayanna presley who I say, you know, she's like a mix between Lex Luthor and Amanda Waller. If they had, if, if for DC fans, you know, if they if they had children, um, you know, she straight up said, "We don't want uh, people who don't want to be like black voices." And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so, you know, does does O, you know, it's this idea of like representation, and, and you're a revolutionary. I'm like, does OJ Simpson represent me? Do, can I do I represent Denzel Washington in any kind of way? No, we're individuals. We have our different mindsets. And the irony is that these people who say that. You know, like like the Kimberly Crenshaws, in my opinion, who uh, who denigrate this idea of black individualism, they what they're doing is inviting stereotyping, because if you if you've spoken to one black person, you've spoken to all of them, if we're all supposed to have the same opinions and, you know, we're part of this collective, 
you know, it, it's it's what you know, what's what's the point? Maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but that's that's what I get from it. That like the well, idea of individual is individualism is anathema to these people. They, they actually reject it completely. I'm like, no, that's that's what we need the most. You know, that's what that's what make, that's what makes us great and what makes life interesting. Well, there seems to be a gradient where, for example, you get certain cultures where people are so used to doing the same thing over and over again, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to mimic whatever they see, and they're going to be a lot more within that culture. But then when you come out of that culture, when you go into, let's say, whatever field you happen to be in, like, let's say, for example, if somebody goes into the theater, or they go into math or science or whatever, all of a sudden, they start meeting different people, and they start ingratiating themselves into all of these different ways of thinking. And I see there being almost kind of like a pyramidal gradient here where you have some people who are way more set in their ways, just want to do whatever it is that their neighbor is doing. And then other people who try to get out of that, I think we're always going to have a mix of those two different things and both should be fine. Like, I don't think everybody should necessarily want to always be the individual and be different from everybody else. Cause Hey, you could have a fine life just living, you know, doing things that you enjoy doing with other people who are kind of like you uh, as well. Like, but at the same time, we should also make room for the reverse. Yeah, you have to, it's like the thing about individualism, some people have contempt for it and sort of spit that word out, but you have to protect individual rights. Like, even if you're mm. not going to be acting individualistically all the time, those have to be in place. I wanted to say that like feminism has the same tension of like, you know, women as a movement, class consciousness, sex class consciousness versus like a lot of individual women will say like that they're not feminists or, or that they're bad feminists because they just have individual preferences and they feel all this pressure to conform to, you know, approved behaviors of the group. Definitely. And uh, so, but, yeah, I'm sorry. And, that, and that's so sad to me because you know, for me, I'm thinking to myself, you know, the freedom of the individual, freedom of choice. You know, if, if a woman chooses to be a, a housewife and a homemaker, that's her decision. If, that, if that's what's filling, fulfilling to her. But then, you know, my, my agent and my managers, uh, my manager, they were both women who were, you know, my manager, especially my former manager. Um, I, I, within minutes of meeting her, I was like, she got some teeth. We don't have to be like good friends. We don't have to be like, you know, uh, all lovey-dovey or whatever, but... I know she's going to bust her ass and work and work on my behalf. She's like she was so aggressively professional and and polite, but also just she got stuff done. And I'm like, I don't you know, you are you are living in the role you're supposed to be in right now. You are in, you are an incredible individual. And whatever your gender is, it, it doesn't matter to me at all. Like you're you're amazing. At the same time, I have friends who, you know, it, I, I who are finding great fulfillment and, and having like, lots of cute babies. But they're being insulted by by these feminists who say, like, you know, don't don't you want to be more than uh, just a mom? I'm like, well, what's more important than raising human beings? You know, and I say this all the time. It's like, you know, your, your degrees, your accomplishments, your career that dies when you go into that pine box. But your children live on after you. And so uh, to me, that that should take higher priority. It's, it's not that it's but I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, you know. What I'm saying is that, you know, I, I don't see the point in denigrating women for making whatever choices they want. I thought that's kind of what it's about. You want to live in a free, open, liberal society where people have the choice to do what they want. And um, it, it's just strange to see uh, other women attacking women for making choices um, that this particular strain of women don't agree with. It's, it's, it's so bizarre to me. And I feel like, well, what's what's the point of all the what was the point of all the activism and say, and talking about, you know, women's liberation, uh, you know, it, it, so maybe oh, we're it's not, true. We're not, we're not liberated, but there's always, <laughs> I know, I know. There's always a split in feminism or a potential split about uh, having kids. Most feminists I think are into motherhood. I myself am not, but I keep my mouth shut because I just see uh, divisiveness in that. But here's, here's a fun divisive thing. Uh -oh. makeup hmm. right like makeup is such a, and we're gonna have a heterodorks episode that's the name of my podcast about makeup but wow there is like that is a that is a thing right like some 
women wear makeup and go like, yeah, I'm a bad feminist. I really like makeup. Other women, uh, you know, there's, there's excellent radical feminist critique of makeup, really legitimate. It doesn't mean that uh, women that wear makeup are not radical feminists, but it's, it's like such a personal intense thing. That's part of so many women's lives. I've been asking questions about makeup lately. It was an interesting discussion. Definitely. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing that as well. We are going to be wrapping up soon. I just want to go to Super Chats. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. And Sneed those Super Chats. If you have any more Super Chats to Sneed, now would be the time. So we have Karina Cohn. The Karina! Great Karina Cohn, who is the co-host of your wonderful podcast. And where could people find it, by the way, Nina? Heterodorks.com. Or on your favorite. I think we're on Apple and Spotify. Karina can correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you should start your own educational organization called Heterodorks Academy. What do you think of that? Sounds good. Here, I'll sing a song. Heterodorks, heterodox dorks. Clifton, how would you rate? Uh... Clifton, will you sing it for us? <laughs> heterodorks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you like, look like like the Joker said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Ah, so, uh, smart, <laughs> so, uh, good advice, good advice. Okay, here we go. Wait, how much uh, is Lev paying you for this podcast? Oh, you ain't getting paid. <laughs> 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 that's actually funny like that was there was this one guy there was this one guy who i wanted to get for the conversation with uh uh sticks about like the diversity stuff and that was also something that he asked me he asked me hi what is your budget for live stream participants i said no budget uh and then he wrote no thank you smiley face and then he blocked me <laughs> all right what is going on with these leftists like why can't they just like be normal human beings and just i like, don't say, know man <laughs> Right. Uh, but What's anyway, uh, comment? okay, Corinna's comment. Here we go, everybody. And by the way, be sure to uh, smash that subscribe button, smash the like button, and smash the bell. Here we go. Uh, Corinna Cohn. Uh, Corinna. Corinna Cohn. Support wrong think. That was the uh, that was the comment right here. And uh, also, there was a comment earlier on from D Asuro. Damn it! I pasted it on my browser window, which was my first mistake because I should have just uh, put it somewhere else. Uh, Diasura, let's see if I can scroll up and find this. There was also a line from Caligula about women in makeup, uh, where women look prettier in makeup. But I think that line was added by Bob Guccione, who was the uh, producer for that. You remember Caligula, Nina? Are, are you a the, fan? The, was that the BBC? Uh, no, no, uh, no, no, Caligula, uh, Clifton, have you seen Caligula, the one with Malcolm McDowell? Oh, you're muted right now. No, I haven't seen that. Oh, okay. I haven't uh, seen it. <laughs> all right. So I think the comment had to do with somebody who was, uh, in, who was that artist who did the Pe Campbell soup can? Shame on me. Shame on me. Oh, 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 I know. Uh, uh, oh, I hate my brain. I hate it. I know exactly Warhol, Andy Warhol. Warhol, yes, Andy Warhol. So there was a comment about Andy Warhol's killer, I believe. I'm just going to go, by the way, to BTR. And, oh, this is a good opportunity to plug killer the Discord. Killer or shooter? You mean Valerie Solanas? I think so, but here's what I'm doing. I am going to the BTR chat in Discord because Discord keeps an archive of every single comment that has ever been made in BTR history. So, guys, if you want to really support the show, what you got to do is you got to become a member of the BTR Discord. It's a wonderful community of people who are both like-minded or not like-minded. It's a very diverse crowd. Uh, we post a lot of things about goon caves, about cat girls. It's great. You're going to love it. But anyway, here we have... Um, let me see if I could find it here. War Hall. I just posted the link to the Discord, by the way. Uh, oh, here's the comment. Okay, so if you could, Lev, could you ask Paley what she thinks about Miss Valerie Solanus, the scum manifesto gal, and the one who shot and killed Andy Warhol? Well, yeah. she didn't, I mean, she didn't really, she wounded him, but he died several years later. All I really know about her was there was a movie made about her called I killed Andy Warhol. It wasn't even a documentary. It was just a, you know, biopic yeah. or something. And uh, I don't know. I mean, she wrote some amusing stuff and then she shot a guy. So. Yeah, uh, I'm not really sure what, uh, <laughs> what, he, 
<laughs> what he was asking. I mean, the Unabomber wrote some. I, she's a better. I think she wrote more interesting stuff than the Unabomber. Oh, speaking of the Unabomber, <laughs> next Thursday's stream is going to be about the Ted Kaczynski Progress versus Liberty. We are going to have the Chad, Chad Haig, coming back on BTR. I know everybody loves Chad Haig. He's going to be back, as well as Just the Facts, a wonderful uh, YouTuber. I highly recommend checking him out. So, yeah, be sure to, uh, after this stream ends, there's going to be uh, the page changing to this stream, a redirect. Be sure to set a, uh, set a reminder for that. That's going to be Thursday. Time is still tentative. It may be 5 p.m. I'm not sure yet because Chad, he lives in India. So we'll see what happens. And there's this menacing looking, uh, there's a picture of Ted Kaczynski's face. And next to it, it says, I tried to warn you. And there's like a, a desolate cityscape in the background with like technological ruins and stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. Anyway. Uh, lastly, uh, Clifton, where could we find you? Uh, now is the time to promote. Uh, well, um, I'm in multiple places. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Clifton A. Duncan. Um, you can find me on YouTube at Clifton Duncan. Um, I have a great podcast on there, the Clifton Duncan podcast. You can also find that on Spotify. Uh, I have a Substack which I, uh, I update every, you know, seven months or so um, called Musings from the Apocalypse. Um, I'm on Instagram at Clifton Duncan Online, but I'm, you know, I rarely, I rarely use that. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm moving into more, in addition to the podcasts, um, into more uh, performance-oriented content. I just posted a video of me singing a Rodgers and Hammerstein classic, which has gotten uh, a hugely positive response. Um, which is very heartening to me. Um, which was because, it? Uh, it was This Nearly Was Mine from South Pacific. And, um, you know, it's a wonderfully, and it's really interesting too. It's, a, you know, one of these wonderful romantic ballads that they don't, they don't really make anymore. It's a very sort of a, a masculine kind of yearning um, song that uh, you just don't hear that, that brand of singing um, on Broadway anymore and that kind of, uh, that mode of expression. Um, so, you know, support independent free thinking artists and, you um, yeah, you know, and uh, say hi. That's all I got to say about that, I suppose. Excellent. And you had a lot of great guests here on uh, your show. You've had Razor Fist, who, by the way, I would love to have Razor Fist. If I have Razor Fist, that would be such an amazing thing because I had sticks. I got to have Razor Fist. And I'll, I'll, I'll trade we'll, you. We'll do your, an exchange. You. Yeah, exactly. Prisoner exchange. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just amazing. But um, it's it's amazing. You know, amazing guests. I mean, Douglas Murray's been on. Uh, Gina Carano's been on. Wow. One, one of the, for a long time, one of my. Pop, most popular uh, shows was a half hour conversation with Victor Davis Hanson, the, the conservative scholar and Greek classicist, just about Greek tragedy and the importance of Greek tragedy and what we and what we can learn. So there's a nice sort of um, little movement and uh, an excitement growing uh, for people who really are looking for something that have of, of, with more depth and, and dimension than what they're getting today. So um, stop on by and uh, check out the conversations. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, say hi. It's called what from the apocalypse? Uh, musings from the apocalypse. Musings from the apocalypse. Why did you call it that? I don't know. I'm I'm a smart ass. I just you know <laughs> it, it made sense to me at the time, and uh, I just haven't bothered to change it. I have like I have like two uh, two essays or articles on there. Um, one one of which I think is real is actually decent. Uh, the other one not so much. Uh, I probably will delete it, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I plan to update it more and uh, get more of my thoughts out there, especially since uh, I've been purged from the entertainment industry. So I, I find a, some way to get my, my voice out there. If I ever make another animated feature, there will be a voice role for you. Oh, hell yeah. I'm all about it. Oh, Nina's animations are genius. And speaking of Apocalypse, Nina's Apocalypse Animated, you could check that out at where? ApocalypseAnimated.com. I wanted to show you this thing. I'm about to crowdfund for this thing. I'm I'm mass producing uh, oh, wow. lenticulars. Cool. Wait, lenticulars, mm -hmm. so that I can sell them at a reasonable price. And I just worked out the package design. Whoops, oh, I gotta man. get one. Yeah, I'm gonna crowdfund it on that Christian crowdfunding site that doesn't Ooh. cancel people. You should uh, link up with uh, Owen Cyclops, who I think. Were you ever on the stream? I was on Owen? the show. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, follow, I follow him on Twitter. Yeah. Like, he should, by the way, reach out to you a lot more because it's not like your styles are similar, but you're both doing, like, two-dimensional, like, uh, without shadows type of animation. So I figured, like, hey, maybe some kind of a combinatory work. I mean, you never know. Like, I want to break this barrier for, like, the Christian people staying on this side. And you know what I mean? Like, it's Well, the crowd, to... you know, eventually, like, if there is an online financing platform, 
that doesn't cancel people. It's going to be a Christian one. And same thing with this crowdfunding thing. It's going to be the Christian crowdfunding thing. So yeah. uh, they're breaking down those barriers. And Break the Rules is breaking down the barriers of having people who would never speak to each other speak to each other, which we did today. We got Ian Miles Strong. We got Clifton Duncan. We got Nina Paley, who, where else can people find your stuff, by the way? I don't want to step on your promo, so go ahead. Ne NinaPaley.com, Heterodorks.com. There is a like page that will have links to wherever you can buy Agents of Hag once it's available, which is heterodorks.com slash hag. Uh, but yeah, and then, you know, sitasingsthebluescom satermaskism.com, ninapaley.com is my blog. Oh, and I'm on uh, Twitter at Nina Paley and Facebook when I can stand it. Also, I think Nina Paley there. I'm around. Excellent. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Go watch the uh, next stream we're going to have about Ted Kaczynski. That's going to be next Thursday. Time still being decided, but make sure you uh, click that set reminder thing already. Make sure you add the like button right now. If you have not pressed the like button, do so right now and press the bell to get regular updates of the videos that they come out. And uh, be sure to subscribe and patreon.com slash break the rules. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time. Good night, everybody. Mwah!